to Asylum Radio with your host, Anibal Mendoza. Hey, what up, everybody? What's going on, Gabriel? How you doing, man? Good, bro. How you been, man? Good, good. So, fucking let everybody know what, what, what you do for a living. Yo, world, it's your boy Gabe, a.k.a. Legend, and I'm a fashion photographer trying to, uh, you know, make it in this world. Trying to think of different ideas, too, just not just photography. Hopefully, I can come up with something and be a millionaire. I know, right? That's the goal. Be rich and not have to fucking work. Or do you want to be rich and work? I mean, I feel like we all want to reach that level of success, but, like, not technically where... My, my idea of success is to be comfortable, to live the lifestyle I want to live without having to, like, fucking scrap to pay rent. Yeah, dude, that's that's like the goal for everybody to work until you don't have to work and right, want right, to work, right, right. you know? But let's start from the beginning. How the fuck did you transfer into photography? Cause you're, um, okay. So people can understand you're, you're not just a photographer right. because I can take pictures. I could call myself a photographer. Everybody's got an Instagram account and everybody fucking and thinks true. they're a photographer. Everybody thinks they're a photographer. That's and true. I guess in a sense, that's true right if you can take a picture you're a photographer right but there's a or if you own a camera yeah but there's a big difference between you and everybody the fuck else well see like the first thing is like i don't even like saying i'm a photographer because i consider myself an artist like but most people oh yeah that's true see it that way but right, like, right. when we create an image we're basically like creating a painting or trying to set a a storyboard with an emotion or some type of feeling not just like oh here's a pretty girl let me put her in front of a camera and that's it because you know if you see my work and yeah i've seen your work hell yeah who haven't seen like i try to make it something that means something to me that less than you know i mean i do a lot of fashion and stuff sometimes it's more fashion focused but um moving forward i'm trying to really create so how, how did this start because well you know I'm always going to say you know because you've known me for a long time. I have. I've known but, you um, for fucking like a decade. Me and him used to rap every day <laughs> in the hallway at school. Yes, this is fucking true. So the way I'm, my I Am Legend came about was I used to be a rapper. And I was always trying to push music and my art and, and be a musician. You've always been the creative type. Right, right, right. But I haven't rapped in a so long. But, mm-hmm. you know, if, if I had to, I still could. <laughs> you but, could? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. His, uh, his bars are fucking hard, bro. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's been a minute, but I'm trying to get back into music. But we can. That's a different it. story? Yeah. yeah, but, but, um, yeah. So I started mm-hmm. off doing music. And when I was probably like 17, 18, I was making this one song with one of my boys. And he had a, a camera, a Canon something. A was camera. it Federico? Yeah, Federico. Yeah, it was a Federico, Federico. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was like, yo, let's make a music video. I'm like, all right, I'm down. And we were literally in his room, probably like the same size. And we're just like, just in his room, smoking, had the beat playing. It was like a cool little two-minute video. And yeah, we were yeah. just in his room. We couldn't even tell. And I was like, man, like. It was dope. It was dope. And I was like, man, I want to make music videos. And he's <laughs> like, well, first, you need a camera. And I'm mm. like, you're right. <laughs> and then, um. The next week, I had I was working at the time. My next check went to go buy a camera. Buy, bought a whole yeah, ass camera. Bought a whole camera. <laughs> it was a Canon Rebel T3i. Uh huh. That shit sat in my room for a whole year. Oh I no didn't, shit! I didn't touch it because I didn't know how to use it. And I'm always a big yeah. guy like, oh, you should just know right away. Like I never thought about practicing with repetition and like learning. Oh yeah, it's... I always thought you'd be a natural. That's why. Oh, I just why pick I it up. It works. Right. That's why I gave up on guitar and drums and like uh-huh. instruments because I was like, I don't have the talent. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I can't. I, I, I just can't. I didn't can't. believe in like practice. So then that camera sat there for a whole year, and I was smoking weed with Johnny like we do because you know I just smoke weed all the time. Of course. And my friend Derek and I had an epiphany like. Fucking vision hit my head. And no you had one, a high no moment. One believes this. No one ever believed this, but I had a high moment. But an epiphany hit my head, and it was literally a vision of me picking up my camera, mm-hmm. learning how to use it, going to LA, meeting models, taking pictures of models, and blowing up in my career. It just went. <laughs> and you're like, stuttered. it's like, gonna oh. happen. I was like, oh. Oh. It's fucking and, happening. And Johnny was looking at me like, what's up, what's up? I was like, bro, I had a vision, I had a vision, I had a vision. And I was tripping out, but it was like real. I felt That's so, a good yeah, ass weed. <laughs> I felt like, like I had the chills. I was like, bro, this is like, it's the most real vision I've ever had that made mm-hmm. me inspired. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like the next fucking week, I kid you not, I went out, went to LA, went to all these little things called photo meets. I started mm-hmm. introducing myself to everybody. Like, yo, my name's Legend, my name's Legend. I'm new to photography. I'm trying to do this. Mm-hmm. Seven years later, I'm fucking here. Yeah, man, and you're 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 pretty far in. Like I said, you differentiate yeah. yourself from 
everybody else who thinks is their, their photographer. Because there's people who, like I said, have an Instagram profile and think they're a photographer and can take a good iPhone photo or a good DSLR photo. Right. But you make artwork. Like, and not just that, you get paid to do it. There's a lot of people right, who are like, right. oh, yeah, I'm a photographer, but I'm a mechanic on the side. Yeah. No, you're yeah. a photographer and you get paid to take pictures. And you've always gotten paid to take pictures. Right. So let's talk about that. How how long did it take you before you oh, started man. getting paid? It takes a while. You mm -hmm. have to do a lot of free shit to be, just to get your craft better. And, and that's the don't understand only part, that. right? People don't understand the grind part. They think that once you have a camera and you can take a decent picture with decent lighting, they think they can automatically charge for weddings, charge oh, for fucking shit. quinceaneras, charge for fucking birthdays. Yeah. I was grinding for at least three, four years freelancing like doing free shit to better my craft to get better and like a better vision now i'm at that level where like i won't shoot anyone for free unless it benefits me like if it's a model it's that, better for your portfolio yeah, like if it's a model that's like unique looking and they can or they're take famous or some higher, shit. yeah if they can help elevate my work then we can do a trade but if it's someone who's like new to modeling and doesn't know what they're doing obviously a more established person like me that's when I charge. Your people have to know when you can charge and when you can't. And like, when when did you figure out like your range? You know, because you can't charge like I don't know, like fucking who's that famous photographer? Yeah, that comes with time. yeah like when when did you figure out where you sit with your talent? Like, well, see, since I've been freelancing for so long, that's basically like I'm struggling so hard for any type of pay. So like, mm -hmm. I would sell myself so short. I'd be like, oh, two hundred dollars for ten images, which is cheap, right? And that's a lot of images for two hundred, right? I yeah, because be like, you still I would try to take anything I can get, like yo, two hundred, two fifty, all for two hours. I'll do this. And then now that I'm steady working, now that I have a full time photography job, I'm throwing out nothing under five, <laughs> and my my main rate right now is fifteen hundred. That's good. And you you'll be surprised by who's saying yes to that now. Yeah, because okay, on any any type of job you have to think of like roi right mm -hmm. like let's take uh this podcast right like if i charge people for a podcast you have to think okay it's a studio right, right. it's this is like if it's a business you have to think how much are you investing before exactly. you can start making money like you got to think about the two microphones the exactly. two stands the table the mixer the laptop the yeah, camera you invested so much in all this yeah but this is for like myself exactly, you know but still. and I'm doing this for me. Mm -hmm. Like I've already had people hit me up and be like, hey, let me jump on your podcast. Right, let me right, do whatever. Right, I'm right. like, for free. I'm like, no. Right. Because I know what my shit is worth. Exactly. I'm like, I'm not gonna let you come on here for free if it doesn't benefit me. Right. That's so, exactly how photography works. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, for sure you already have to be like, all right, I need right. the camera, I need the lenses, I, I need the lights, shit, I yeah. need the stands, I need the editing uh, software, editing laptop, software, laptop, everything. all that shit. So all that shit cost you initially money and you mm. need to make that money back because right. that's also what makes you different from like the regular iPhone shooter, right? Who's like, oh yeah, I'm a badass photographer and they just have their iPhone. They're trying to edit shit on their phone. It can be done when you're starting off for free, but that's the difference on why you get paid. Right. Because you have you the- bring a vision to something. If someone needs a job. Oh, yeah, the eye, like whole right? Like having an eye for the photography is like. Exactly. I like, don't know if you can. Well, maybe you might have the talent, you know, like you might have natural talent into like setting up a photo. Correct. And then some of that is learned, right? Because you like well, photography is hard. When I first ever started, I already had like a natural eye for good coloring and like what works well next to each other. Because when mm -hmm. I would f first shoot for like, I don't know, say a week. Mm -hmm. I would have people telling me, like, man, I love your work. Like, how long have you been shooting for? I'm like, oh, like a week. And they're like, <laughs> like a week, bro. What? I just like, picked yeah, this man, up. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. I was and high I, as yeah. fuck. And then yeah, I just I'm picked just it up. You know? fun. Yeah, I'm just like having fun. Like, I think photography was the first thing I actually picked up and was mm -hmm. naturally good at. I remember how I was telling you, I don't believe in practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, photography, I had good straight on fucking, you know, hor horizons and like. And did I you mean, take any, did you like YouTube shit? Did you like take um, any classes? I, YouTube, I didn't take any classes. I took one class back in high school for a film with Mr. Garns. Yeah, but I used to, I, I wish my mindset wasn't the way it was back then. Cause back mm -hmm. then I felt like if you took elective and shit, you're a fucking loser, you're a nerd, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I had the dumbest head on my shoulders back then. And I, right, I took fucking every elective. <laughs> yeah. 
I hated school so bad that I never wanted to be there. Oh yeah, me too, bro. You Fuck I mean? that. So I was just like, man, I wish I would have stuck in with photography back then, because who knows where I'd be now. Right well, now. I think back then, like shit's changed since like we went to high school and how we were taught photography, because our high school sucked. They didn't yeah, give shit that's also money. Very true. Because Mr. Garns, like shout out to Mr. Garns, because he was one of my favorite fucking teachers. He actually, he's the only teacher who sat me down and fucking like when I started giving up on that class, he pulled me aside. And he was like, Anival, why are you half-assing this class? You're better than this. Right. No other teacher ever gave a fuck to be like, hey, bro, you're smarter That's than true. this. Why are you That's not true. trying? But the equipment that we had was traditional film photography. Like you had to load a, a roll of film. You had to like adjust like. Uh, your focus manually which is still this, like the best type of photography so yeah, yeah. Be, you can still do it and it gives you like a great effect and then there's like you, you would have to like set your ISO manually your uh, what is it your exposure fucking all that shit like you have to do that shit by hand you need to know how to do it before you can take the picture if not it's overexposed or underexposed and like how long did it take you to get before you got all like the basics down I mean it took a while because your eye is not ready for mm -hmm. these things you think it looks good but it doesn't like if you were to scroll down all the way down at the very end of my instagram i uh -huh. still have old photos from from when i first started because i like to reflect on my journey your old work and my exposure was fucking way off uh maybe it wasn't as sharp or like the model was like here and the main focus is here and i was just like oh that looks cool like, <laughs> I, you think it looks good right yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fresh eye to everything but then when you get better and then you see your old shit you're like wow i was so trash <laughs> i was so bad there was no editing there was it's no like, color I, I think i used yeah i think i was using fucking instagram filters to edit oh like, no -uh. i was at that rate because i didn't back when i first started i didn't even have an editing software i would uh -huh. edit on a phone app right i think everybody yeah. starts that way and at least people, now people were so surprised like that i was doing this they're like how do you get your colors I'm like bro I, I just put a filter on from the i just put some instagram yeah. filters but now that i'm on photoshop and stuff you can see the quality change you can see the sharpness better like uh, I isn't that such a weird touch. trip right like like when you yeah. think you're doing better than everybody else yeah. like you look back now and you're like oh god damn that was so trash i mean i still think i'm trash now to be real with see you. but think about it this way like five years from now you're gonna be like yeah. oh man back I then was i was so trash, trash. Yeah. i was so there, wack there's so many photographers that inspire the fuck out of me because they're amazing and their photoshop skills are even 10 times more crazy and I oh want, yeah I want to learning photoshop in itself is a, like its yeah. own skill like it's its own mastery yeah, that yeah, you like need some to learn people don't like to do it because they, they want more real than anything but like i feel like if i can just do my vision and use some photoshop chop some photo chops then i think it could be like next level creative because like i just want to like duplicate my model and like shrink her down and like i don't know i just like all these ideas i just want to bro make. like i said photoshop is its own mastery like once you yeah. once you learn photoshop and you master it you can do whatever the fuck it's you true. want it's true all i know that is the basics is how to skin retouch right now but i don't do anything crazy i learned a little bit of photoshop like like I said, I take pictures, but I take pictures of like nerds. And I take pictures of cars. And I take right. pictures of whatever. I don't need it to be published. I don't need it to like be in a magazine. Maybe one day, you know. Oh, and I was just gonna point this out. Uh, that's upside down. Oh, <laughs> I'm used to cultures looking just like this. I know, right? And it's the, like the cork is up, yeah. but the cork is the other way, and the ceramic like absorbs the moisture. I don't know what the fuck. It, it, that's how it is. But I take pictures of like nerd shit like this. Like I'll take pictures of cars. I'll take right. pictures of people cosplaying, and I don't need to worry about if it looks good, yeah, right? Man, as long because as you're having fun, man. Like that's what people don't realize. It's like just enjoy your shit. Yeah, that's what I try to do. You yeah. know, like I, I take pic all these people that are popping up right now. I've taken pictures of and sent right. it to them and tagged them on Instagram. Exactly. So and this is what I love about the photography or video. Like it makes you go out and see do the world. Shit. Yeah. And, and not only when you do shit, like you see the world differently. Because like when I started photography and I started seeing fucking a shadow of a tree, mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, I can do something with that. Right, let me now take a I'm picture. I'm seeing shadows differently. Now I'm seeing the corner of a wall differently, or like, oh, there's a blue wall. I'm gonna make this shit mm. my backdrop. Like, you just fucking... like, do you take notes of that shit? Like, do you like there's, go? There's times where I'm in like LA and I see like an interesting like looking little field. section. I'll screenshot my map to see like, oh, I'm here. 
Mm-hmm. And I'll figure I, I might have to come back here one day. And like, shoot. just yeah. put a little reminder says, right. interesting wall, possible photo shoot location exactly. and shit. Like, there's this um, neighborhood in Silver Lake in L.A. Mm-hmm. I would go there all the fucking time just because the city is crazy. Like, all the houses look cool as shit. Like, a rich-ass like, neighborhood. Rich-ass <laughs> neighborhood. They had, like, a cool aesthetic, and they had cactuses and, like, a silver wall and mm-hmm. flowers. So I would shoot there all the fucking time, mm-hmm. just using people's backyards, people's front yards, until they would come out and be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what do you do? Get yeah, the fuck out of here. Like, Photography is almost like a like a law thing. Like, you literally hop fences and fucking, you know. Yeah. I don't do that as much no more. When I first started, I would break into things that were not supposed to be. Oh, no shit. Sick. Like, there was this all-white apartment in L.A., and mm-hmm. it was, like, blocked off. It was, like, an art piece. A guy. Oh, what the fuck, bro? A, a guy created this well, it was a motel. He painted the motel completely white and uh-huh. even the palm trees. All what the fuck? painted white. You can probably put it up on Google, but... um. He painted everything white, and it was an art piece, and they gated it off. And is I, it on your Instagram, like that photo shoot? Years ago, yeah, right, it'd, be, it'd be like way, way down. Unless I deleted them, I don't remember if I deleted them or not. All right, so let's check your Instagram. Cool. So let's uh, so this is your Instagram, right? What's your handle? I I A M Legend. So I am Legend with two eyes. Gucci. All right. So like, what is this? Like 2016, 2015? What are we These talking are about? These are recent. These are probably like 2018, 20. This is when I went to London right there. This dude right here. Where? Scroll up down. This uh, guy right here? Down. Yeah, that guy right there is in London. I went to London and shot this little bloody loke. Bloody loke. Oh, bloody bloke, man. What the heck is that? Some yeah. rapper left a comment on my picture? I didn't even see it. Uh, little, Some check mark? Little Moti? DM me, please. I don't remember seeing that. Yo, little Moti. Oh, uh, star 100 100 we heard okay. now dm I've dm never, us i've never seen it. i wonder who that is I have to check that uh well let's find out okay uh we got bands we got um some more bands i've never seen more bands life. on bands and then that's the end of his instagram hmm. but he's got a check mark what well, looks like to be a check mark but he's only got Forty-one thousand followers, but yeah, he's good. No clue. I've never seen so that. he's he's a rapper, but that you know. Anyways, yeah. We can skip that. Oh, you exited it. Oh uh, yeah, but let's see if we can. Find, is it? Would it be on your website? Oh uh, no, that was when I was trash. Oh really? Yeah, my website has all my best stuff to me. Oh, your Instagram or it has your your best stuff? No, my website would probably have like my better. Photos, oh okay. Like the ones that I really love, and then my old stuff would be all the way down Instagram. Like, Okay, so let's take a look at your website because we want to show what like what you really got. So is this all? This, do yeah. I just scroll down or is there like? Want, I need to update it, but like if you go up, these are probably two of my favorite. The, Actually, the, three. the, the one with the whole fucking blocker, my one of my favorite. The, shows. the top row. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about these. So these are in um, Pasadena City Hall. It almost looks like Spain when you go there. Like if you see that mm-hmm. one in the dark, it looks like you're in fucking another country, and the whole. The whole premise of this shoot was like she starts off as like this fallen angel that comes to earth and she's in this crown and this fucking outfit because you know she's all angelic and shit. And then the one where she goes down to the red is like she's been on earth too long and she's transforming and going down to like a dark, deep path. And how'd you guys get that that lighting? Because it looks like it's at dusk, right? It looks so, yeah, like the sunset. sun was going away. This red light, I had a an assistant with the red bar light was it Joey? beaming on it. Um, it was Joey. <laughs> it was it Joey? Was, no, 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 not Joey, you know. Oh, That's no. It's so funny that you said that, though, but the, uh, my friend, her name's Joey. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she was assisting. Oh, That's I was so like, funny. oh, is it Joey? Yeah, yeah. yeah Joey does a lot of my, uh, my shit, too, though, but not so, at night. So what, like, okay, because te- this, technic- yeah. uh, this is a technical photo, right? right? Like, I know enough about photography to know that this isn't an easy, hard to pull off, because if yeah. you try to do this, yeah. You would underexpose your subject. Right. And overexpose the background. Right. This is my first night shoot I've ever done. It's, it's a technical shot. Yeah, and it's my only one I've done so far. Right? So you need to add additional light to your subject mm-hmm. and make sure you kept it just exposed enough so you can still have the background showing right. and still have your subject well lit. So how did you how'd you go about this when you were like, okay, I have like 15 minutes to just like yeah. dial we were, this in. We were definitely rushing because the light was losing and it looks fucking amazing back there. But um it's just trial and error, man. I just I just tried so many times different different F stops and just kept going and it finally took that one shot. I was like, oh this looks good. Right. And so it that's a different feeling, right? When you have like that that pressure that you're like, okay, I got five minutes yeah, before the light is gone. Lighting. lighting is your your boss it's yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Down and you're like no because we started this 
we started at golden hour. So I think at that time it was probably like four thirty five. Because mm -hmm. if you go back to the other ones, that's like at peak golden hour, like this These? this one right here. How oh, the other one? one? Yeah, like how this the one? lighting and all that. She's so warm toned. And even on the next one, you can kind of see the sun leaking behind her. That's all golden hour right there. And it just looked fucking and like this model's oh, also amazing as fuck. So another thing I want to ask, right, yeah. is like you kind of have like because you've been doing this for how how long now? Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. So you've built connections and you know how shit works, right? Right. So when you first got started, you kind of went, okay, someone comes at you with the project, right? And you have maybe a model, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's it. You don't have wardrobe. You don't have makeup. You don't have hair. Right. How long did it take you before you started figuring out what you need, what you don't need to get the job done? Yeah, depending on the project. Um, yeah, like put the mic up, like right, right here. Like, like you can, you can like point oh, it at your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, depending on the project. Um, it depends. Like some people hit me up for like basic things that I can do by myself, and mm -hmm. they can bring their own wardrobe. But some people want like really cool shit, and I'm like, oh, you definitely need a stylist, and that's mm -hmm. costs way more extra. Um, but some people have like a brand already and they just need models. So then that obviously I'll find the models or I'll find makeup, but I already have like the basic routine that we all jump to. Cause any, mm -hmm. anything you do in life, you have your own routine and you have the answers already. You know what I mean? So it's like, Oh, I need this. I'm like, oh, cool. I got this. I'm like, Oh, you're going to need this and you're going to need her. You're going to need her and her and her, but this is the price. So let, let's say someone comes at you, right. And they have an idea. They have like a, a, a vision for their photo shoot, right? And the, fiddle, the photos they, they want to be produced. But they say, hey man, I need such and such. Here's my idea. What do you do with their idea? What do you do yeah. to make their shit come together? Yeah, it's a lot harder when you have to do someone else's vision as an artist because you, you're used to doing your own vision. Right. But you know it's a job, so you try your best to do their vision. And a lot of the times I can do that, but I would come up with like little of my own ideas and half the time they're like, oh yeah, I like that. I like that. Like put your spin yeah, on so it. So that way we can almost like collaborate on something. But for the most part, like if it's like a brand shoot, usually you have to do what they want because it's for their brand and it represents mm -hmm. them, but I can capture it for them. So it might not be as fun to me and it might be more boring and basic. But um, that's like not as job. creative. Yeah, it won't be as creative. It just be more straightforward, like commercial right. brand, like a girl smiling, like hey, or like yeah, running. like she's running yeah. or some shit, and she's just like posing, like she's hanging out. You know, it won't be artistic, but it's for commercial purposes, like how I do it for Forever Twenty One. That's where I work at now. So. And like lit. So if let's say some someone comes up to you, right? Like you, they you sprinkle a little bit of your own talent and your own image into whatever they want. So. Like yeah. that, there's some creativity that is expressed through some of your work. But let's say someone comes at you like, "Hey, I want a cool, dope portfolio shot where you're, you're like more free to do whatever the fuck you right, want." Right, that's how you get some of these. But if you want to be fully styled like these models have been, it's gonna cost a lot more. Right, of course. You gotta pay my stylist and my makeup artist and me. And do you have like a set crew now? Uh, technically, I do. But, or like um, some people that you know who you yeah, bumped into. Like I used to have multiple groups of people but a lot of people have kind of sadly gave up they on just, their on their stuff on their stuff they just don't want to do it no more mm. and it's hard it's really really hard to find someone who's solid and who's always going to willing down. to work yeah because like yes yes we're not going to get paid right away because mm. i have i have girls who i've been working with who we never done paid shit together but then when i do get a paid opportunity who's the first person i call them mm. And when they get paid, it's like the best feeling for them because it's like I fucking put tr this much love. Yeah, man, that elbow you. grease for yeah. sure. And I've gotten so many people's paid, and I want to just you know, and I don't do it for anything in return. But I've gotten a lot of people paid off of you know helping me, but I haven't had anyone get me paid. Oh no, shit! Believe it or not, that's crazy. Yeah, like so. I'm, there's like no nobody who's like, hey. So I don't know if like people are like, I I mean I would hope people at least recommend me. Mm. But like every time I have a paid opportunity, I bring my team and I, so far I haven't had any like. That's crazy. I would have yeah. thought it'd be like 50, 50 at least. Yeah. But I mean, I'm sure though, if the opportunity arises, they'll definitely. Yeah, man. Cause me, let, let's, let's talk about some of these pictures. Like explain this one to me. How'd this one come about? 
Yeah, this one, I just wanted to try something different, and this is just all plastic, and it was just fucking, we we're just throwing it up and taking multiple shots at once, and it looked like it followed her body position, and I thought it was amazing. And that's a ROM. She's an amazing model. She's actually killing it right now. She's doing big things. And that's what's cool about this industry. Like, I can meet someone who's just starting, and mm. the next level, they're fucking with Rihanna, or, like, they're doing, like, big Vogue. That's got to be ridiculous, like, right? Yeah. Like, fucking, you, you you did some free work for them, and the next right. thing you know, they're, like, on Vogue or some exactly. shit. So how how did this setup go? Like, how did, did you guys go to the studio? Or? Yeah, that's in a studio. Um, there was, like, a gray backdrop because the, the plastic was way too thin, so we didn't want to see the shit in the background. So we did one background, and then a plastic background, and then... We just started throwing up the plastic and it, like wh what was the settings for this because you want like again this that was natural light through the window so i had pretty good lighting already oh okay so the studio was yeah, already kind of so well lit. Already really lit i don't remember what settings i was on at that that was years ago because all right so for people who aren't privy to photography capturing movement is yeah. extremely difficult in the sense that you have to capture it and it has to be sharp because you can capture right. movement and it'll be blurry so nine times out of ten, you have to set the. Um, and uh, this at this time, I had a lens where I had to manually focus everything. So that's oh, that's a manual. bitch. Yeah, there's no auto here. Yeah, so that's a bitch. Okay, so that's yeah. another level of complexity. So you have to add, like set your uh, shutter speed uh, fast enough to capture the movement and freeze it right. in frame, so you I can think capture. Another one where she's like in the air. I don't know that's, if it's uh, oh right there. Oh no, uh, yeah, it is one. I guess she's jumping and like floating in the air. Which looks cool. There you go. Same same concept. Like you're freezing your subject, like yeah. mid movement, and having to have your settings on point. Because if that you don't, like so cool, like big blown up like this. I haven't seen it like this. Oh yeah, man. Like uh, so, so that way you can like enjoy the detail, you know. Yeah. So, like I said, it's a it's it's complex. To, you can there there's like two methods of it. You can you can spray and pray, right? Like you can set your settings, spray it, and then check. Or you can have have like the experience to have it dialed in, and sometimes you got to do a little bit of both, right? Correct. And then, let's see. Oh, this one's like what? Is this outside? Yeah, it's outside. Yeah, I do a lot of um, natural light outside stuff. Is that is that like your um, your speciality? Natural light. Uh, yeah, that's like my comfortable zone. But I'm trying to do more like creative lighting and like in studio stuff and like like if if you go back real quick see go down that's when i was experimenting with lighting like more oh the, these these spotlights yeah. things yeah that's actually a piece of broken glass piece of broken glass and i was reflecting it on the sun like i just try interesting shit and then that blue light is because i put a piece of blue film on top like, of that on top of the glass and it created this like cool and did you have like an assistant? Like, what, yeah, I had an assistant. Design. What was your process though? Like, cause you had to. Everybody starts off what everybody else is doing. You know, like you go, right, oh, that right, looks dope. Right, I want right. to do that. How did that turn into like what you do now? Like with your experimentation and like, yeah, your it's just eye. like I get inspired by little things that I see, and I try to think of like cool shit that I um that I can think of my own way, and I just create like a mood board and ideas, mm -hmm. and then when I'm actually on the shoot, whatever comes in my mind to try, I just try it. I'm always the person who tries shit, and if I don't like it, I'll cancel it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, let's try this real quick. Ah, uh, never mind. But at least I tried. Yeah. And like with that light shit, like I tried it, and that model's also amazing too because her little gap tooth makes it. Uh, oh, makes I didn't the, even notice her gap makes tooth the to be honest. Like, like pop for some reason. Hold on. To me. Oh, what you know? What you're right. She does have a yeah, gap. She's I didn't even notice. Amazing. She's so talented. That's really dope. So there, there's got to be like struggles that came besides not not being paid you know because getting paid right. only comes with experience uh, once you get good enough you'll get right. paid regardless and when you love something so much like these projects are or for me mm -hmm. so like i don't care if i'm getting paid or not because i want to create with these faces and these people like those two girls down there that was such a fun shoot for me the ones with the yellow film around them like i try to make it look futuristic and fun oh okay and did did you set up this idea for the wardrobe or was that them? So like my stylist and I kind of collab on stuff. My stylist. Oh, okay. That. But um, my friend had this like yellow film stuff. And I was like, you know what? Let me just throw this shit around them. Make them look like they just came from another planet. And like that's the yeah. fashion. <laughs> fucking it looks good, there. man. It does. It really does. It looks yeah, like. It's interesting. Like, so for all these uh, pictures, like you, you, like I said, you're on a different tier 
than most people. Like there, um, what is it? What, uh, there's, I think Joe Rogan says it the best. There's levels to fucking everything, right? You can be an, at the bottom and you can think you're at the top. You feel me? Because right. there's always somebody who's better than you. Right. And so I think that comes with ego too. Right. Like you can like six months in, you're probably like, man, I'm fucking dope. But not there's knowing. People, yeah, there's people that are very, very confident. And yeah. Probably like some of the worst work I've seen. Right? Yeah. But you're like up here legitimately. Like to be 100% honest with you, your talent is, I want to say, I, like if there's like scales to it from what I know, you're literally like maybe two scales away from being like top professional grade, like fucking magazine posts and all kinds of that fun stuff like you're wow. you're not anywhere near this center tier you're like top tier maybe like there's maybe a couple tiers above you and that's about it because yeah. it takes like like you said it takes years to get from instagram posts to yeah. these because it's like you might not like think about it now because it's it's second nature to you right but i mean be- I'm, i appreciate that but i just like I'll never feel that way. I feel like I have so much to, to learn. Better. Yeah, I have so much to learn. I don't even use lighting yet. Oh I yeah, just, like, the, wait till I master things. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, like the, like I said, there's always something that yeah. you can learn. Someone's always better than you, but there's levels, man. Right, you're, right, right. Like as a photographer myself, right. I can tell you you're better than me, and by a margin of planets. <laughs> like it's not even a fucking. It's not even a fucking joke. Like I have, it, a, I have a vision and I try to make it happen. So, like a good example was that moving shot, right? It's technical. It's a technical shot, right? And it's well lit and it's captured right. well, right? And then you have an eye for photography, like, like I said, like there's not a lot of people who goes, you know what? Let me make my models, like they're already dressed. Let me add some fucking plastic on top of them and true, make them look true. futuristic, like yeah. who? Who has those kind of ideas? Someone wow. who, who's already done the basic shit and you know, goes, yeah. I need to make... I can't be boring to me no more. Yeah, I'm I need to I be feel. different. I need to be interesting. And and it's not a... It's not, what what is it, a, a want? It's a need, mm-hmm. right? Because most people, they'll take that, that same picture and not even... They're like, oh, they're dressed. Yeah, done. that's true. Like, I don't need to add shit. But like I said, you're on a difference here. And you have like a, an amazing eye. So explain to me what happened here because this this is another what one of your tests with lights, right? Yeah, and that one actually Joey did help with. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shout out to our uh, our boy Joey. Um, let's see. It's funny too because you're the only one who calls him Joey. I just call him Joe, but um, I call him Joseph. I call but him average Joe. That's I call him Joseph, call. but uh, you know, <laughs> no one calls him that. And then fucking, I'm the only oddball out. So yeah. I'm like, okay, what's up, Joey? Joe. But yeah, this is also another piece of film like a little reflective film and the sun was beaming and I had Joe go like this, but then just like shake it and she like that. But you can't really see it shaking, obviously. I did a video for this because I was trying to get into video at the time. And uh-huh. it was like this beautiful master, like masterpiece, but I don't have it anymore. And my model didn't want it because at that time she had like bad acne and you can kind of see it in the video. Oh, so gotcha. She was like really very... um. She's like, nah, that doesn't look great. about it, yeah. yeah. But there was only like a few shots where you can see it. I'm just like, oh my god. So I, I don't even have that video no more. That's why I showed you. Oh, okay, for sure. But yeah, it was beautiful. So let's see, what else do we got on here? There's a portrait section. I really like that shot though with the horns. Uh, horn. Oh, actually, you know what? I wanted to bring up this one because this one reminds yeah. me of a painting. Yeah, everyone that I've said seen. that. Everyone said that. Uh, I know what you're talking about. The girl with the little blues. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a Van Gogh, if I'm mistaken. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah, a lot of people felt that. Have you seen the the, the painting that I'm talking about? Yeah, the, it's like the lady with, with the blue she's, thing on and yeah. she's like the side profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. think it's a Van Gogh. I don't know if it's Van Gogh, but yeah, everyone loved that set because of that. But I wasn't even aiming for that. You were, it, just, it just happened yeah, to be coincidence? Happened. Because my stylist was like, I have these uh, swim caps. I'm like, put it on. Let's try it. Like I said, I try everything and then boom. See, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. not everybody does that. Right. Some people are like, swim caps? Why the fuck would I put a swim cap on my model? Like, what the fuck? Right. But And to make it look good, right? Right. And then I added that. Um, the veil? Yeah. The basically. little fucking fabric that fall, falls naturally. The teal. Is it tool? I think it's teal? tool. No, mm-hmm. the fabric name. I think it's tool. 
Oh, it's tool I like T O O L. I think it's like T U L E or something like oh, that. Oh, interesting. I can't spell so that maybe. Yeah, I can't spell either. So the one with the horns, what happened here? Like who? Like that, that is literally like a like a dead antlers and antler thing. Like it was a skull behind her, you know, like as a as a just a wall piece. Uh huh. And she was climbing up the stairs. You're like, wait. Yeah, she was climbing up the stairs for the video that I was recording because we were recording video. I just wanted her to walk down the stairs. I was like, wait, stand in front of those horns real quick. And then boom, it just looked like it came out of her. Was... And did you have to change lenses? No, I see at the time I'm I'm only shooting on a 35 mm. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And that's the manual focus one because that's the only lens I've ever had. Uh -huh. So I'm using a portrait lens to do everything. Not portrait, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that... I have a new camera now. I finally upgraded after seven years. What 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 are you using? So I had the T4i or the T3i. What did I have? I had the, the Rebel T4i. For seven years now, I finally have the R6. Which the is R6, the nice. Yeah, and it's fucking way better. And what is it? Tell anything. me the specs. So it has like, um, it's still a flip out, like my old one, which I love. Mm -hmm. I love that feature because I can get like angles and look at it. But when you put your eye into the sensor, it, it goes whoop, and it, you can see it like a video, like a Sony almost. Oh. Yeah. Um, so as soon as you put yeah. your eye, it pops up in the eye like, like a little fucking video thing, which I fucking love. Um, way better quality. How many megapixels is it? Shit, I don't even remember. I'm so bad with like technical shit. Like that's one thing about me. Like I have friends who know the fucking the ups and downs. What was it a real everything? T six. Yeah, R six. Oh, R six. R six. Canon, right? Yeah, they're so technical. They fucking know everything. I don't even know everything, bro. That's the thing about me. I just know how to use it. They're just like I know how to yeah, fucking take I a know picture, how to use bitch. It, but I don't know the fucking names. I don't know the fucking every little technical thing about it. They know all their gear. They know everything. And sometimes I feel bad about that, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't care. I do what I do. <laughs> oh, but there's sure someone's going to ask. Be yeah, like, oh, yeah, what yeah. What does it, What? how many megapixels but, yeah, does shit. it have? People care about gear more than they care about actual talent. You know what I mean? Like, you think, they yeah. think you have to have an amazing um, camera to take amazing photos, but we can have the same camera and you can still not take a good photo. You know that is mean? fucking true as fuck, man. We could have the same location and my photo will come out way different. People don't realize that. See, this is the this is the kind of camera that you'd buy after seven years. You know, you don't right. buy this shit yeah, like right off right. off the fucking exactly. bat exactly. because you can't cut your teeth on this because there's too many features. Mm -hmm. It's probably too much for you. And to be honest, you probably need better lenses than a better body. Exactly. I still actually do need a better lens. Um, that's gonna come in, but the lens is actually three K. So the body's three K, and the lens that I want is three K. So boom. That, that's that's crazy right so it's a 20 megapixel uh a cmos sensor that can shoot 4k 60 uh full full uh full hd one 120 p um so basically this is a bad bitch it's a bad bitch it's a bad bitch it's nice it, i love it it was it like a christmas present for yourself and you're like you know what I'm, i deserve yeah, this shit. i started working i sold my car my old car uh -huh. For three thousand, went to go buy this. Yeah, legitimately, <laughs> yeah. legitimately, this is this is so basically old car, car money. Y'all, I sold a car to get a camera. Yeah, picture that. That's how much I love the craft. That's how much I believe in myself. And yeah, that that's crazy. And are you still going to be shooting on a manual thirty five? Um, I have to get an adapter because it doesn't work for this brand. Right, because this is a, yeah. a full frame, right, and the other one's frame. Uh, yeah, it's mirrorless. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then right now I have the stock lens, mm -hmm. but. This stock lens is probably the best stock lens I've ever seen. Because usually stock lens are pretty ass. They're pretty trash. They're pretty trash. But, but this, this is a full really frame. Fucking good. This yeah. is a full frame. So it's good. So so I'm okay for now. But I definitely want to get like a, I think a 24 through like 70 or something. And, and like what is it? What, what's the kit lens? The kit lens is a 105. Or no, it's like a, I think it's 22, 24 through 105, I think. Yeah. That's a pretty wide range. Yeah, it's nice because I get to get actually like zoom out and do cool angles. So mm. if you go on my Instagram, I can show you. Okay, let me pull up Instagram. Let me tell you. All right. So I'll tell you which ones are uh, from the new camera. And I fucking love it. All um, right. I don't. Oh, yeah, it's my Instagram. <laughs> but I follow you. So, bam, there's your Instagram. Boom, boom. So, so let's like see. These ones right here, these two are from my new camera. This model, actually, all those, all these from this model are from my new camera, and that's the stock lens. That that's um, pretty dope. 
Yeah, she's stunning. I fucking love her. So let's uh let's let's scroll to the right. And all the same still same camera? Yeah, same camera. Gotcha. And this is the stock lens, correct? Correct. These are also the same same camera. And like does it does it bother you that you're not using the thirty five anymore? Or is it like no, something I love that... the range that I have now? The thirty five was kinda of limiting me. And it like, like uh being limited. So what what do you do for um what is it sharpness right because usually stock stock uh stock lenses are high f stops like you can't drop it yeah, down to get like I a shallow depth of like, field I think this one's like a four, four right it starts the, does that bother you does, no, does that feel like it, it limits you at all makes things more in focus which is fine because you can see the more of the background and I actually like that because it's new to me now mm -hmm. everything's different to me now so it's like like I'm you have so a different range to, yeah I'm so used to the thirty five blurring everything out behind her. And this actually makes it like more better. Uh, that was actually with my thirty five. That's that's, my, that's one of the is, old ones. This is in my garage. I shot this in my garage. She wanted to do this concept, and I was uh -huh. I was down for it. I was like, if you drive out to me, I'll do whatever you want. I didn't mm -hmm. want to drive to LA for this for a garage this shoot. Is, this is not a concept that like creates uh, a story, but it was just like I loved her look, and she's stunning, and she's so sweet. And I was like, if you drive out to me, we can shoot this concept. But if I drive to LA, like we gotta do something better than this, like more, right. more styling and like, like your, the effort's gotta right, reflect right, right. The, the photo shoot, you know? Right. Like I just I do stuff like this just to show people, like if they want to book something like that, mm. like something cute and basic, I can do that. I like mm. to show variety. Uh, and what what what? So what was your starting range for like, like two hundred dollars? So would that be like a two hundred dollars shoot back then? Yes. Yeah. Like nowadays I'm like nothing under five. Nothing under five. So for a basic shoot, it'd be five hundred. For something more legit, you're at like fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. So um, well, have you? How was your first wedding? I did one wedding, one uh. wedding, and it was a small wedding, luckily, and I still had to help assist me because you can't. It's There's a much. bunch of shit. I was focusing on bride and groom. My friend was focusing on family and friends. You oh. have to have that. You just have to because I had to capture every moment. You know what I mean? If I was doing it all by myself, there'd be no way. Did you have a game plan going into it? Because I've heard from other photographers that like the wedding is like it's most stressful. The, uh, make it or break it in a photography yeah. world. Yeah, I mean, luckily it was a small wedding, but um, it was in this actually in Rancho, uh -huh. uh, that little vineyard down there. It's like a little winery thing. But um yeah, I just my game plan was like I just focus on the bride and groom, whatever they do, I'm gonna go pull them to the side, take these photos, and then uh, during the kissing part and everything, my friend just do the. Party Did you have to do and, any like, type of fucking like control shit? Be like, all right, bitch, chill the fuck out. You actually, look like you're nervous. No, no, actually, it was really nice, and that's the only wedding I think I want to do. <laughs> you like, I don't oh, think I want to do weddings at all. It's not my style. Like, don't be afraid to say no. Uh -huh. to people out there like. Like if it's not your vibe and it's not your style and you don't want to do it, don't fucking do it just because. Even if it is good money, like you don't have to. Like I hate doing weddings. People ask me to do quinceañeras. I don't want to do quinceañeras. Mm -hmm. Or they tell me to take baby pictures. I don't want to do baby pictures. That's not my vibe. See, there's uh, like every summer, right? Yeah. There's like a roll of weddings and because, baby like, pictures and quinceañeras. People, people think just because you do photography, you do everything. They're like, oh, why don't you take pictures of that fucking that beautiful. Uh, bridge over there. I'm like, I don't care about that bridge. Right. People don't yeah. understand that photography has yeah. its own subsections, exactly. right? Because there's like a group of people who specialize in architecture. Exactly. There's landscape. people landscape and all that. Like, Weddings, it's all used. It's all a fucking craft. Yeah. Like, people, if you ever go to Pasadena City Hall, you'll see the dudes who fucking do nothing but quinceanera shoots. And those, I'm sure they're the fucking masters of it. Like, oh, hire them. for sure. If you want quinceanera shit, hire the quinceanera guys. If you want wedding shit, hire the wedding guys. You know what I mean? And that's why it's good to have yeah. a portfolio, right? Exactly. Because then people get to see what the fuck you're good yeah, at. And what you offer. Yeah. Because yeah. there, there's people like me, right, who I will take shitty pictures of, like, I don't know, a car or, right. like, cosplayers. I'm saying they're shitty because I'm comparing to yours, <laughs> you know? But, but if I would take a photo of a car, I'm thinking it's stupid and it looks ugly. And yeah. You take it like, damn, why does yours look so good? Yeah. So that's that's the thing. Uh, but those would be like what I might be good at because I'm I'm more familiar with cars and cosplayers exactly. than like fucking can some someone comes up, to, oh bro, I saw your cosplay stuff. Can you take pictures of my little sister's kids and yet? I'm like the what? fuck? No. <laughs> is she in a cosplay? I'm like, is she, yeah, like legit. Is she gonna be in a cosplay? But that, that everybody's got their own niche in photography, and then they're. There's some people who do freelance work for like a, the adult industry, and right, then there's people right, who right. do like uh, 
uh, what is it, fashion? Like, you do mainly fashion now, right? I do fashion, but I'll I'll shoot stuff for, like, uh, OnlyFans content. I have done that. Like, people think I don't do everything, but I can for the right price. Right. And, like... like I, I shoot content for girls that have OnlyFans, and they pay me to do it, and it's, like... And how's that How's that work? Like, how did how'd that come to be? So, I got a friend who, who does it, and mm-hmm. she's absolutely stunning. So, it's so easy to do something like that when someone who's, like, already kind of a model... Mm-hmm. Um, she gets paid a lot for OnlyFans and she just asked me like, Hey, like I want to be, I only take iPhone photos, but I want to do like professional creative photos instead of just me being cute. Mm -hmm. Like, can you bring your eye to this? And I said, absolutely. So like we did a shoot and she fucking loved every single one of them because instead of just her being doing content, it was like creative lighting. Like Mm -hmm. she was like laying down all cool. And like the way the sun was beaming on her and the, the way I edited it. It was like perfect. It was like super perfect. And yeah. is there anywhere we can see that? Um, or is it only on her phone. fans? No, no, I have them on my phone. I can show you. Yeah, let me take a look at them if you got them. But so how, how did how'd that happen? So she hit you up. She's like, hey, you yeah, seen some she, of your stuff? She wanted someone she can trust. And, you know, obviously, you, yeah, can't, you can't be a fucking creep in these type of fields, you know, guys. Yeah, you can't be a scumbag and yeah, be a there's photographer. A, there's a lot of scumbags out here. And um, I don't condone that shit. I'm very big on that. Um, let's see. So, like, what? Where do you like draw the pricing for that? Right, like, because so for it, this, obviously, when you're uh, when you do OnlyFans, you make tons of money if you're well established in it. Right. So, but there's a range for that too, yeah, right? So, obviously, if you're making a lot of money, I'm not. You're gonna pay me at least fifteen hundred. Right. Because I'm not doing stuff like this for free. I don't care. Like, do you check their followers or do you like? Yeah, so obviously um, this girl and another girl that I shot OnlyFans content for, they have a high following, and they're really established in this field, so they're making really good money. Mm -hmm. So here's one that I did. I'll show you this. That's the creative lighting I'm talking about. Okay. So for the people who can't see, uh, I'll describe it to you. Uh, Is she Asian or is she just like... she's Filipina. She's Filipina. Okay, so she's a beautiful Filipina. Yeah. Um, She is on a... What looks to be a floor or is it... Yeah, she's on the floor. Um, And she's like... Has her knees uh, up to about chest level. She's wearing a thong? Bikini bottom? Yeah, like a bikini thong. Um, She has her arm to her shoulder. Very... A very um, delicate pose. And she's got her head slightly off the ground. And but the the trick is the lighting, right? Yeah. She's topless, and make, and making her look good, not stupid, you know, right? Not like just sexual. It's like artistically, like um, she looks inclined. delicate. Yeah. She looks like she just got placed there, like right. she got like laid down. It's like an artistic nude, not just straight porn or like straight naked. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not wrong with porn, you know. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the lighting, it's like I wouldn't say it's harsh lighting, but it's like. Uh, a one source yeah. from the left yeah, uh, the left out, side straight out the window it just yeah looks angelic too. it looks good it looks really good and like the is that like how the whole theme went uh not the whole theme let's see i have a censored one too but i don't think that's I basically what that picture looks like i have a censored one that I'm, that's why i was telling you i was thinking about posting these just so i can get more clients from this but i don't know if i should with like the work that i have yeah like it, i know that that's a concern right it's because concern. that like some of your work might conflict with somebody else's work exactly. and might not hire you for base. that this one's censored but uh, i wouldn't show that still just because i don't know if i could right um but, so uh it's another a picture of the same model light, more mm-hmm. natural light yeah and then is this in a, in a studio or is that her house? Her apartment. Her apartment. Yeah. She's got a very nice black splash of like uh, stone, like small stones. Yeah. Um, and then it's her in a um, mini skirt. Um, and she's like tilted over on her side on the ground. And she's uh, lightly pushing her hand, her putting her hand on her um, upper hips. And she's got a... a that, that's not a natural pose. I don't think anybody would take. You know what I'm saying? No, that's why it's for content. Like, yeah, it's for OnlyFans. Like, like she's stuff people pay for. Right, right, right. I'm. I'm gonna be honest, bro. I've never been on OnlyFans or right, fans right, only right. or however. You, right. You know, so I don't know what they offer. <laughs> so, yeah. well, some but, some people do like actual sex work, and uh-huh. some people just do creative like nudes. Mm. So it just depends. Like, and there's even people who just don't do nudes at all. They just they're just beautiful. post content. They're beautiful girls, and they have like millions of followers, but they're they're you know those dudes who just want to talk to them mm. those how, that's how they get paid yeah yeah and it's it's a well, what would you say this is like a almost a full body picture except yeah, for her legs body. yeah 
Um, I also have these ones too. This is a different model. I'll show you. But uh, it, and her, how many, how many pictures would it be for this? Um, so this model right here, I gave her like 11, 11, the one okay. that I just showed you first, she had 30. I gave her 30. Okay. So this is, uh, she's, she's on the ground, yeah. right. And she's like crawling, but it's like, uh, Creative from a window lighting. Yeah. Like really there's fun. a, there's like light coming in from the window. That's giving her like, uh, like a shadow across her body. Right. And like, she's crawling forward, not to you, but forward across from you. Of course, she's topless, right? Because this is an OnlyFans picture. And, uh, like, she's in uh, a thong. But she's really pretty. She's got, like, colored hair. She, right, it, you, she's but cool. It, I Very could see this being in a, like, a magazine, to be honest. Right, right. Like, I could see this because it doesn't look like a... It doesn't look like someone's sending a nude. Exactly. It, it's, it just so happens that she's topless. Exactly. That's what I aim for. When I do these type of shoots, I don't aim to just be like, okay, we're making OnlyFans content. No, mm -hmm. like I want to be creative, but then you can still make money off of it. Right. Like right here, this is her with a projector. Let's see. Oh, wow. That looks pretty cool, actually. Right. So it's a com like, I would say the room's mainly dark because mainly you need to dark. Yeah. yeah. And then you have what rose petals as the being yeah, projected on top of her. Yeah. Right, she has her arms crossed under her breasts. Um, she has a very uh, delicate look to her face, and she's she looks like she's looking towards the camera. But where's the where's that other lighting coming from? Because she has uh, like, like blue. a top window. Oh, there's a yeah, top window, right. and you had no control over that lighting. But it looks sick. Yeah, it, it does. Like alien type thing. Yeah, was it like a full moon? No, it was bright as day. Oh yeah. shit! She just had like a little covering, but I like brought it down a little bit. And there's like. Was her underwear see not see through uh, uh neon, glow in the dark? Yeah, I think it's like a neon green. Yeah, because there's like a, her yeah. her thong that's running down her hip is like bright as fuck, right. but it's like everything else is dark. That's right, a really right, dope right. picture. It's dope. That's what I'm saying. Like when I shoot OnlyFans content, like yeah, I'm doing it for your content and you can sell these, but like I want it to be creative. I don't want it to be and how does what's the word raunchy? No, nah, that's not raunchy. Or like just fucking sexual. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't like know. basic. You don't yeah, want it to be like, basic sexual. I don't want it to just It'll be, be classy yeah, sexual. Like there's, you know? like there's nothing wrong with porn, but I don't want it to look like just porn. I want it to be fucking artistically mm. creative. You know, like we're gonna do creative nudes. We're not gonna just do nude. Yeah, that, that's how I treat it. But and like it, how, how does that work for you as the creator to work with somebody else? Like because it's you're a challenge. For they're sure. paying you right for your talent and your stuff. Right, but. At the end of the day, they're selling it to other people, right? Right, right, right. So they're gonna, at the end of the day, probably make more money off of it. So how do you? They are. Like, how do you price that? Like, do you like? Is let's say this person's coming up, right? They mm. just started their OnlyFans or whatnot, and they're just like, "Hey, man, I got fifty followers. Right. I I want to do fucking." They see those, they find out from a friend of a friend of a friend, right, right, and they're like. Like, do you just say, look, man, it's going to be $1,500 regardless right. of what, yeah. like how many followers yeah. you got. Like, like, how do you, how do you break that down to them? Like yeah. if someone comes up it, to you and just like, it's going to be just like that. Like how you said, like, Hey, like I understand, like you're new to this, but no matter what, you still got to invest in yourself mm. if you want to get anywhere. And like how I invest in myself with my craft. So if you ever want to do anything in life and make money off of it, you have to invest in yourself. First. You have to like so, stick to your guns. Yeah. So if you're going to be a new girl to the OnlyFans or a new model in general, like you're going to have to pay someone who is more established and, and know what they're doing until you can get better quality because you get what you pay for. Everyone knows that term. And does, is it any, is, is it more tense on, it's on these type of... It's definitely a challenge because you, you want to make it look good and professional and not, like I said, you don't want it to look fucking... Basic slut. Basic and just nasty, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like you're here shooting, you know, you ha you want to make it artistic. It has to be. Has, so, ha that's like... Why I use the, that's why I use the lighting so the way I do. Right, so you want to, like, just sprinkle that yeah. little bit of you on there? You have to, because if it's just, like, a butt or it's just, like, her body, it just looks fucking dumb. Right. And there's a lot of people who do that. And they're just kind of like, okay, well, I use a professional camera. Yeah, or, like, they'll have a fucking a naked girl in, like, a, a liquor store. And I hate stuff like that. You know what's funny is that uh, when I went to Texas, um, I met a millionaire, right? Right. And it was the first time I, like, ever got a chance to, like, legitimately one-on-one -on -one speak to somebody whose net worth is, like, to the roof, right? Usually nine times what out of ten. They, what do they do? They're a photographer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Make so millions from photography? Yeah. Wow. 
uh, so I'll get to that, right? So um, I was in Texas for my job or whatnot, and I was doing um, uh, our work training or whatever. And uh, it was the weekend, so we went out, and we were, like, hitting the bars. And I saw, uh, what, like, an old Chevy, like, slammed to the ground. There was this really hot girl taking pictures in front of it. <laughs> and I was like, damn. The first thing that caught my eye was a car. Right, right, and right. then it was and the girl. The girl yeah. And then I was in a nice suit, right? Because I wanted to look good that night. And I stopped, looked at the car, and then I saw, I noticed the girl, and she was fire. She was probably like 26, mm. right? And then there's this old dude who looked like a bum, <laughs> who was like 40-something, 50-something, next to me, just like drunk out of his mind. And he was just standing there. And I'm we're all watching. There's like a group of people taking, like, they're like looking and taking their own pictures. So I wanted to kind of talk to the girl, but I wanted to know whose car that was. And I'm staring. And this dude walks up to me. He's like, hey man, you like the car? I was like, yeah, the car is beautiful. He's like, what about the girl? I was like, oh yeah, she's hot too. And and he's like, yeah, I know, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, that's my wife. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, no shit. I was like, is the car yours too? He goes, yeah. I was like, oh, no. He's like, yeah, we're here to watch the Delta Bombers, uh, but someone wanted to take a couple professional pictures before we walked in or whatnot. So I I let them. I was like, that's cool, man. What? That's that's dope. He goes, you look good, man. You you look like you would be a saxophone player. <laughs> I was like, why? Why is that? He goes, you're in a nice suit, a handlebar a mustache. I yeah, was like, I was good, like, uh, okay. I was like, all right, cool. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything, but yeah, sure, saxophone player. Why not? And he goes, um, he goes, you know, man, like, uh, if you work hard, you get a hot wife. <laughs> I was like, yeah. you know what? That's inspirational oh, no. as fuck. <laughs> I was like, that's cool. I was like, cause there, like, there is a noticeable age difference. Like, right, she's twenty right. something, and he's like fifty something. I was like, well, usually that doesn't happen unless you're balling, or you got a big dick. Yeah, it's it's shit. fucking true. I mean, that's the judgment. <laughs> so okay. I I had to ask. I was like, so what do you do for a living, man? He goes, oh, I'm retired. I was like, oh, really? Or, like, he didn't. You know, you don't look retiring yeah. age. Like you should you're still walking around, you're still having fun, you got a young girlfriend, like real estate, that's what I would assume. <laughs> I so I asked, and he's, he's like, Oh yeah, man, I was a photographer. I was oh, like, wow. Oh no shit. I was like, he was, yeah, man, you can look me up. I was like, for sure. He gave me his name and I have it on my phone somewhere. Uh so I looked him up and it was like mainly landscapes. I was like, What oh, the wow. fuck? I was like, so you take pictures of landscapes and stuff? He goes, Yeah, but that's not what I cut my teeth on. I was like, So what'd you cut your teeth on? He's like, Oh, I used to work for Playboy. I was like, really? He goes, yeah. You know Pamela Anderson? I was like, yeah. He goes, you know, uh, fuck. He started naming names. He's just dropping names and names and names and all, like from like Playboy from back in the day. And I was right, like, oh right, man. Right. So so you knew you knew Hugh Hugh Hefner, right? He goes, oh yeah, I met him a whole bunch of times. He's cool as fuck. I was like, so how did this whole thing happen? He goes, oh, I just picked up a camera one day and then started taking pictures. And then one day I took a picture of a model nude and. You know, that that photo got published. And then next thing I know, fucking I got a call from uh, the Playboy company. And then the next thing I know, I was their photographer. I'm telling you, man, sex sells. Yeah. And yeah. it was the that's craziest crazy. thing ever. I was like, so that's crazy. So that's how you got paid. He goes, yeah. And then I started when I started working for Playboy, I started doing my own the side stuff. And then that side stuff started to sell. And I got tired of taking sexy pictures and. I started taking pictures of landscapes and now my landscapes are worth a few thousand dollars each. Right. And I was like, so wait, you started doing porn and then a got few tired of it. got tired of it. Yeah. Of course you get tired of taking the same type of pictures over exactly, and over. Exactly. He's like, but what you really loved was taking pictures of landscapes mm-hmm. and now your landscapes are being published in other places and they're paying you thousands and thousands of dollars just for that. And I was, I was amazed. I was like, Amazing. From for, from starting from simple, well, I guess not simple because it was a v- huge magazine when he started right. to like taking landscapes and then they're in like museums and shit. Yeah. That's crazy to me. That is. And I was like, yo, bro, like that's inspiring. He's, he gave me like this entire pep talk on like how to work hard and like how to do all this stuff. But it's sort of like he did it for, he did it since like the late 80s. 
Oh, that's the time. Yeah, late '80s, and then like all of the '90s, and then like he start he started retiring in the like 2000s. And I was like, bro, what? He goes, yeah, I retired when I was like 35. That's crazy. I was like, what? He goes, yeah. yeah. And I met, I met my wife like f- like five years ago. I was like, what? And she she was hot, bro. When I, I say I she bet. was fire, she was like super fire. And the crazy part is that she was like Irish Mexican. Mm. She spoke fluent Spanish, but she looked white as snow. Wow. And she was tiny and stacked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where did you find her? Oh, she was a model. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I was, was like, he like a good looking guy, at least. Yes, <laughs> he was. He is, he is an amazingly good looking man. I mean, what he said is true, though, because like when I first started doing photography, the only thing that was popular was like half naked, sexy, booty stuff, like, mm. you know, and I would do that because that was what was trending and what was cool. And, and that's probably what got me half of my following, to be real with you. But then it got boring because it's too easy. Anyone mm-hmm. can put a half naked girl in a photo and make it pretty and like get a lot of likes out of it. Mm-hmm. And then when I started doing fashion, I was like, oh man, this is a fucking challenge. It's right, hard. because it's different. It's hard to put a girl in clothes and like make her fucking <laughs> put them in clothes. Yeah, put them in all these clothes and make her look cool. Mm-hmm. And I fucking fell in love with that. I fell in love with that challenge because, you know, anyone, like I said, anyone can do bikini stuff and like half naked stuff. Like, See, but easy. like it. It's a professional setting, right? Like he was doing Playboy and right. there's sort of like there's contracts, there's exactly. managers, there's whatever. In this specific instance, you're doing everything by yourself. Someone right. comes to you, My you person, yeah. Like, how do you handle that situation? Like, do you be like, okay, you're gonna be naked? Yeah. And as a man, we're weak. I'll, I'll say this myself. It'll probably be really hard for me to just have this, some naked, beautiful woman in front of me and not be like, Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm, I'm very professional for sure. Yeah. Right. So, But that's got to be a challenge, right? That's like another fucking step on top of everything the fuck else. I mean, the people I usually work with, it's like either they're friends of mine already. So we just have like this friendship and this trust with each other. So it's a lot different. Like that first. Like, do you have you. to like break the tension? Be like, oh, like crack jokes and shit just to yeah, fucking. Of course. I mean, I'm, I'm like that all the time. I'm always like trying to be mm-hmm. funny and stuff. But like mainly I'm, I'm work focused. Mm-hmm. So as soon as we start, I'm thinking of more work ideas. I'm like, yo, let's try this. Let's try this. Instead of, you know, thinking of like what. Titties. Yeah. So I'm just, like, I'm just so <laughs> focused on what I'm working on. That I'm just like, okay, let's do this. Let's See, do that that, that by yeah. itself eliminates like 50% of any photographer ever right. that ever existed. Because right, me and you right, both right. know there's fucking scumbags out scumbags. there. Scumbags. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm a photographer. Let's do a nude photo I shoot. Know, people get into this field to try to meet girls, and that's not why I'm here. I'm here to just fucking create. And I mean, if something happens, it happens, you know, but nothing's ever happened. And like, obviously, of course, you're going to have a crush on these girls because I think people forget that like photographers are humans first. Right. They always assume that you're just a guy. You're the guy with the camera and that's it. They don't like, oh, you don't have feelings. You don't have crushes. You can't like these girls. Like mm. people forget like we're humans first. Like, of course, I'm going to have a crush on one of these girls at one point. I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's so cool. And she's pretty and humble. Like, I fucking wish this was my girlfriend. Like, or like, you know, I mm. wish she would give me a chance. Shit like that. Like, I'm going to have crushes on women. But like when it comes to my work. 100% professional. See, that's like another yeah. challenge, man. Like you got, yeah. you, you, these are the type of things that people don't think about when they get into the field. Yeah. And it's sort of like you, you have that choice. Do you want to be 100% professional or do you want to like shoot your shot? And it's sort of like, sometimes you got to make that sacrifice yeah. and just shut the fuck up and take a nice ass picture. Yeah, you know? just definitely shut the fuck up. Cause you don't want to get fucking, you don't want to come off creepy or un- uncomfortable and then get canceled right there. And then, yeah, that, you know that's I mean? always a, fu- especially yeah. nowadays, right? Like my main thing, every time I shoot with anyone is making sure they feel comfortable. That's like the biggest thing. Like, I'll keep my distance. I'll look away. Like I, you know, like I'm very, very good with stuff like that. Like, how do you avoid the politics? Because I'm pretty sure you bump into a couple people that you're just like, oh, this person is fucking annoying. Yeah, they're they're probably not smart. They're fucking as dumb as fuck. I don't that I don't care to be friends with, and I'll just like keep my distance. Right. Yeah. Cause there's some people who be like, there's, there's everyone, there's photographers like that. There's models like that where you like, they just, they, they're all ego driven, you know, mm-hmm. they want to be seen. And like, you know, I was shooting an event and I had girls come up to me like, Oh, can you take that photo? Like, um, no bitch. No, the fuck? <laughs> like if I see you and I want to take it, I'll take it, you know, but like, you know, there's people who want to be seen and look that, like they're doing shit. That's gotta be stupid yeah. as fuck too. Right. Like, have yeah. you ever been in a photo shoot setting, like maybe on the public or on the street and then like some right. rich people come up to be like, Oh my God, you got a camera. Take a picture of us. We're <laughs> I, out. I haven't had that, but 
I've had people come up to us. I've had a homeless guy actually. I was doing a photo shoot. He wanted a model for you? No, the homeless guy was like, yeah, bro, that's perfect. Now do this, now do that. And he was like giving all these tales. It was hilarious. It was so he was, hilarious. He was probably like a professional yeah, probably like, back in the day. Back in the day he's like, like, is this my future talking to me? <laughs> no, but, um, like, who the fuck are you, bro? Probably the coolest moment I had, though, is I was doing a photo shoot, but this is back when I kind of sucked still, and like my models weren't as talented and good. Uh-huh. But... um. We were doing a photo shoot and a cop came and I was like, oh fuck, maybe we're, oh, not, no shit. Maybe we're not supposed to be here. Like I was freaking out, right? Right. And he, like, pulls and over, shit. And pulls over and he goes, Do you guys know uh this house that you're taking pictures in front of? And I was like, No, man, like are we not supposed to be here? And he's like, Oh, this is uh where they filmed so and so. And then he was just like talking on the shit. And he looked at my camera, and I think I was using like a damn it, I think I was using like a 50 at the time. Mm. And he's like, I have the same lens. <laughs> and I was like, What? He's like, Yeah, I do photography on the side, man, but you know, I became a cop. <laughs> and I was just like, bro, like you should pursue it. And he's yeah. like, do you mind if I take a photo? I'm like, dude, come on! So he, oh he no, shit! His camera, and my model started posing. He just started taking pictures on his camera. It was like the coolest fucking thing. Ever. That's fucking dope. Yeah. Was that in LA? It was in LA. Yeah. Hey, shout out to LAPD for yeah, not being whack. That was years ago too. So I don't know. That's hilarious. Yeah, it was cool. He was like, you know what? I'm yeah. I'm gonna go out there now. I was so fucking like excited that I tried to take a photo of him taking a photo, but my exposure was so off because I didn't even. You didn't think about it. I was just like, ah, I gotta (laughs) capture this moment. And my shit was all bright. And I was like, fuck. You're like, God damn it. Yeah, but it was a good good day. And like, so your your photography is taking you places, right? So what's some of the most interesting places you got to go because of photography? Well, when I first ever started, I went to Hawaii. But this is before Mm -hmm. I even got into like modeling. I was doing landscapes, but it just Mm -hmm. wasn't, it wasn't me. But it makes you want to do shit, bro. It makes Mm -hmm. you do shit. Like, that's what I love about it. Like, one of my, before we get to the rest, uh, my barber, Mm -hmm. she talks about me to her coworkers. And I guess her coworker just got into photography. Oh, okay. And she was cutting my hair. She's like, hey, I forgot her name. She's like, hey, Kamiki does the photos I was telling you about. And she's like, oh, really? And she's like, show her your Instagram. I I told her I love your stuff. And it was just, like, landscape. And she's like, oh, I'm I'm not good, but, like, I like to do this. And I was looking at that. And she's cool. Like, this is dope. Like, it makes you go places. Like, she was, like, going to L.A. and going to Redlands and taking it. like, as long as you're having fun and you go to do shit, uh-huh. you'll love it. So she's like, yeah, da, 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 da. But anyways, um, I fucking been to Hawaii. I've been to Chicago. I did one shoot out there because the other girls canceled on me. And this is obviously, I, I'm, I'm not a, a known name. I'm mm. a known name person, so it's not like I can find people everywhere. Mm. So Chicago, I found one girl, but it was freezing cold. Of course. It was fucking 100 mile per hour winds. What the <laughs> like fuck? Fucking the Windy City, in uh-huh. fact. And then I went to New York, had an amazing time in New York. Um, shot like three people out there. Mm. It was fucking dope. Some of the coolest photos, I think, back then, back when I was starting, because it was a whole new environment for me. New York is a vibe. I heard it's wild. Yeah, it's a vibe. I mean, How long were you out there? Like five days. Five days. Yeah. Did you have like. Do you have like a set days that you're like, all right, I'm gonna take pictures these days and then every, the rest of these days? Every day I had to shoot. Every oh, no day shit. I had to shoot. Yeah, I have, because I work with agencies and mm. if people that don't know, you can reach out to agencies as a photographer and shoot with signed professional models um, that need work or like free work so we can do shit for free. We can do like a trade because uh-huh. they need it for their portfolio. And if they like your work, they'll they'll send you girls. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I had like three shoots every day or one shoot a day. And I got to experience like the real New York because my friend was living there and she let me stay with her in her apartment. And so oh, like, that's I got dope. to see a real New York apartment, walk around the city, go have coffee, go have it. a sound. <laughs> I fucking loved it. Yeah. I don't know if I can live in New York. I don't know. But um, once I heard York, it's like you need to have like that city taste already to to want to move to New York. Yeah, because it's not for I'm everybody. Doing. I heard it's a tough city. It is tough. But here's what I always say: if you could afford it you'll love it anywhere you go if you could afford it you'll love but no one can even afford la bro it's fucking hard it's yeah so it's so hard right now is, isn't, isn't new york more yeah. expensive i think so and it's a lot smaller yeah because like everything goes up the buildings right. go up. they don't go this way like how we do uh, the buildings go up it's like straight so it's the like fuck like up smaller space but it goes high up so there's like stairs and stuff but at least her apartment was like that i'm sure there's other spaces that are like that but they're expensive because i know that city is huge it is huge I'm not used to taking trains either. I was so confused trying to. How was that? Yeah, I had a luckily I had a friend. Okay, I heard it's. I I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard New York people can can spot Cali people. Oh, I'm sure they can because we're looking around how to fucking get around, and everyone else knows where they're going. Yeah, right. I heard that we sound different, for one. Well, I mean, I've only 
when I was out in New York, there was a lot of tourists. A lot. Oh, yeah. I only met one person who had an actual New York accent. And I was like, finally, I finally found one guy. He, he's like, fuck yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what kind of piece do you want? And I was like, finally. Finally. <laughs> They're like, I want pepperoni. Yeah. But the coolest, the coolest place I've been to from photography is London. I fucking love London. Shout out to London. How was that? That was probably the best trip I've ever had. It was amazing, man. It was amazing. I was what, where were you out there for? Seven days, I think. Uh, my first time ever in a hostel. That was an experience. Ooh. Well, that was so cool. I, how's that? Like, what, what, like, yeah. Um, is it just like because of like finance that you're like, I'll try yeah, this hostel? 30 bucks a night. Oh, and damn. It's cheap. And Hell yeah. I was broke when I went and I spent half my money out there, anyways. Uh-huh. But yeah, so I started. Well, first, I met up with friends out there. So I met up with a friend. We had an Airbnb for the first night. Mm-hmm. And then met up with another friend instead of his Airbnb for like the other two nights. And then the last three nights I had, um, it was in the hostel. And I was with another friend. Because when I think of hostel, I think of like that scary ass movie where people die. <laughs> yeah, so there are some creepy ones for sure. But luckily, uh-huh. the one that I went to, it was like an old school so they had oh, it wasn't like legitimate old yeah, school like it was made i think it it was an old school made into a hostel so it had like a whole bunch of places you can go but mm-hmm. they had their own bar which was tight oh. so i was down there getting drunk and like oh, having fun nice. and shit and like you know they had all these rooms they had really tiny showers bro like you had to literally be in the shower like what the fuck like that because you have multiple showers well bro you know? you're a big boy yeah, you know, know you're not you're not too. probably not london built you feel I, me that's true because europeans are not big like americans uh, yeah it's I'm, rare it's rare you're, you're, you're tall bro guy. you're a tall boy that too that too but so th- that, that might have been just london size yeah their food is not as heavy and greasy like ours really? is it's not as salty really you, the fuck if you eat london food it depends where you go though but you'll you'll probably consider it like bland huh. like, like you feel like it has less flavor what'd you eat like we went to a burger joint. The only the best thing we went to was um like this fish and chip spot. Of kinda, course, it's kind of known for that. Mm-hmm. But they had like the best calamari I've ever had. That shit was fire. Yeah, yeah, it was so good. What part of London did you go to? So we started in what, what was it called? I remember the city name we we started in, but apparently that was the hood. That was a that was apparently, a ghetto because we were getting burgers. They got ghettos out there. Apparently, because we were getting we. I mean, I'm, I know people from London are fucking gangster, but like where we were at, it didn't seem ghetto. But the lady when we were eating, she's like, uh-huh. "What are y'all doing out here?" And I'm like, "Oh, we were Airbnb." She's like, "This is like the worst part of the city." And I was like, what "Really?" The fuck? She's like, "Yeah, it's really bad." Out is here. there like, ghettos like our ghettos? Apparently, she's like, "Yeah, there was like a shooting right here this week." And then like, and I was like, "This." They got guns. We were walking around. I'm like, "This is a nice area compared to our <laughs> ghetto." You know what I mean? So we're like, "This is your so like, this is ghetto. Like, this is a ghetto. This like, is yeah, nice." They were saying this is like a bad city. Well, like, like you guys be got here. fucking nice yeah. neighborhoods, That's nice what buildings. Saying, like, like, what we the hell? We shouldn't be here. She's like, "Yeah, this is not a really good area for tourists." And I was like, "Oh, no shit." shit. So like, we went to another side where my friend's Airbnb is, and that was like the rich area. So uh-huh. I got to kind of see a lot. I was like, "I don't know, bro." When I think of like. Yeah. ghetto in like london i think of like peaky blinders and shit like dudes in suits walking up to be like hey yeah. mate what are you doing here mine yeah, no, it's not shit. your neighborhood times are different now but um yeah like we went to the richer area that's I, what i'm saying like i didn't see nothing that seemed ghetto because we're so used to like ghetto yeah, ghetto is fun like, it looks ghetto like this shit looked pretty to me like, like there's like, a fucking crackhead yeah, just scoping you out already head. just fucking, fucking abandoned buildings and like broken uh, windows you know that's uh, our ghetto but yeah i guess that was like a bad area for them but then we it's all nice a, yeah we went to a rich area <laughs> which the house was fucking beautiful i'm sure it was like a million dollar some home but yeah i got to see a lot of it and then we went to this restaurant called sketch which was like really fucking sick it was what would they would they serve they have like like interesting shit i forgot what i ordered but the the rooms are different themes the so rooms? like one room is like all pink and has like white furniture and like paintings and there's another room oh fancy like, yeah there's another room that's like tropical and like trees and like cool shit and what the, the hell the bathrooms are like egg pods they look futuristic. They're like this big old pod like this. And you, uh-huh. go, and you go inside and it's like a bathroom. Did you take it, any it pictures so, of that? Because that sounds interesting as hell. I have them on my phone, I think. I don't remember. No, not on Instagram? Mm, I think on my highlights. I don't know if you can see highlights on this, oh. though. Oh, yeah, right there. That's the food to the left. Oh, That's what I ate. Let's go back. Those ones are just like random shit. All right. I, I'm, I'm the type of person where I think I need to change... Because I'm the type of person that I try to take no no photos and just enjoy the moment. Mm. But then I don't have shit to look back on. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, I'm like the opposite. I'll like take pictures of random yeah. shit. Be like, this is the cup. 
The, yeah. I I fucking so bought the, at that one place. The, uh, rich. That was like the expensive Airbnb. That's my boy Rob. What a Rob. That's the expensive Airbnb. That's like the richer. That looks Airbnb. nice. Yeah. Looks and it goes upstairs and stuff. It was nice. And that was like the spider. Bro, you're over here fucking taking pictures of like fancy ass shit. You're like, oh, the spider in well, London. Like, as soon as I turned around, this motherfucker disappeared, bro. He like vanished. Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, I don't know where the fuck he went. That's fucking the most scariest fucking that thing. That was scary. Damn, do I not have a photo of the bathroom on there? I thought I did. And like, this is such a trip. Like, I, I ha- haven't really traveled. Yeah. So, at least not outside of the country. Like, so, well, it, it's got to be such a fucking change, right? Because, like... It's the best feeling, man. Once you get on that plane you, and you realize that in a couple hours, you're about to be in a whole other horizon. It's a whole different culture, yeah, right? A whole different view of life. They're also white people, but they're just, like, a different breed oh, of white there's people. Different. There's everything out there. There was probably... Oh, there was this one spot we went to, like, really rich, and they're, like, all Armenians. And Like, they control the whole fucking part of the In the UK? Thing. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. You know what? This is like the fourth story someone brings up about Armenian people being like on the money. They're rich out there. Well, I mean, they're rich in a lot of places, but the spot that we were at, it was like a a coffee spot. What the hell is this? Yeah, that's where the queen is at, I think. What were they doing? I I guess they just do that march. I don't know. Unless they were doing something that day. Uh, Someone probably died. Didn't even know. No clue. Oh, (laughs) Oh, look, horses. Soldiers. See, this area Uh was not too far from where the the Armenian places were. Oh, so this is like the nice high end stuff. Yeah, they like ran the whole fucking town right there. All right, let's. And this is the this is the nice area, right? This is that's the first we got here, and then we walk more, and it leads to like where the rich area was. Oh no shit! Yeah. And then no one came up to you guys and be like, "Hey man, you can't be taking pictures out here." No, no, no I didn't get no, no problems. That's dude. Honestly, I don't know how I'd feel about getting checked by a, an English man. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing out here, man? I mean, mm. people are tough everywhere. Yeah, but it's sort of like I, I don't know if I could take it they, serious. They got, you know, they got dope dealers out there. They got fucking, you know. But okay, so I know there's different accents in London, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like the uh. There's like how everybody's got different Englishes, right? Yeah. What What was the most? Was it the typical clean accent, or did you get a bunch of people who talk like uh, dirty as fuck? And I you're just like, I, I can't. Yeah. I you're them. like, what'd you say? I heard multiple, but man, I, I'm a big fan of accents. Like girls with accents are like my weakness, man. I think that's <laughs> every, I think that's everybody though. They're just like, but when you're in Europe and like you just hear like the French girls accents. Oh, like, there were French girls there. Because oh, French France is or Paris is like two hours away by train. Oh, so there was a lot yeah. of French people visiting. Yeah, so like I went to Paris for a day too, just because. Just to go. Yeah, just to go. But um, yeah, like the London accents are my favorite. Uh, French when they speak English is my fucking favorite. It's like so sexy to me. But um, yeah, like I what I notice in London is like they say like one words more. Like I, I saw two guys talking about gym workouts, uh-huh. and he was like strength, speed, velocity, like that instead <laughs> of like instead of saying like. You're gonna have all the strength. You're gonna have all the how Americans like kind of exaggerate. Like, you'll have this. You'll have uh-huh. this. You're just like strength, speed, muscle. <laughs> mass. He was like, you know, just saying one thing. I would just like, enjoy yeah, listening yeah, to so people. It was fun. It was fun to listen to that because, like, well, we more. I think we explain things more, but they're just like one word. Like, dun, 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 like they. Have, I feel like I feel like they have um, a broader knowledge of English words that we yeah. don't use. Yeah, of course, but. I I I probably just be sitting there just listening to people's conversation eavesdropping just because I want to hear them talk or even just saying like they know you're American when you're like oh where's the bathroom oh yeah it's where's called, the loo yeah where's like, the loo sir where's the loo or the toilet I think they say toilet too instead of bathroom they don't say John no, I don't think they so. don't say John I don't think so and so what was up with this that's like a museum I think they're like I I took a picture of it I don't know what yeah, it, it is was, it was fun. Yeah, it's, these are all in the museum. I think this is the one with the rain. Yeah, it was at a museum. I forgot which one it was, but it was really popular. Did you get, did, like, besides the... Oh, this right here, that's Beyonce's ring she donated to the museum. Beyonce's ring? Yeah. That looks like a hairpiece thing. I know, right? It's like a diamond butterfly ring that apparently she donated to the... Museum. To the museum? hmm That's kind of random. I know, right? Right? Like, here's my random ring. That's what I thought. I think I go, I think I scroll down and it, and it says like Beyonce's. Oh uh, Beyonce's yeah, Beyonce's Italian ringing. The heck? I'm just like, okay, Queen B. She didn't like it so much. She's like, you guys can have it. Uh, you know, I I don't need it. I got like thirty uh, of these. 
That's so funny. That's hilarious. I miss London. I really, I think I could move to London. Oh, see right here, Faya. Uh-huh. That's the Armenian, like. Uh, the, the hangout, the yeah. spot where the Armenian people there were popping. There was like a whole bunch of them. And we were the only ones that they were, like, we were getting looked at. Did you get called out for being California no, out there? No. No? Like no. how you dress? The hat? None? I don't even remember what hat I was wearing back then. I wonder if I had like an LA hat on. I don't think so. Like, because, like, okay, around the world, right? Not just America, but they, California's got like its own thing. Right. New York and California are like well, they, the spots. A lot, of, a lot of people say that like they don't like Americans. That's what yeah, they Yeah, that's say. what I heard. But I don't know. Everyone I've met was really nice. Oh, really? Yeah, they didn't like, kind of go like, uh, yeah, no, Americans. like we even went to a bar at one point and like these guys and girls were just dancing with us, having the time of our mm-hmm. lives. We're all getting drunk together and they're just like, oh, hi, hi. And like, we just started like this dance circle. Like we had a great time. That sounds dope. Yeah, like everyone, it was really fun. Let's see what else we got. And we got a fucking, what is that? Pound cake? Chocolate cake? I don't cake? remember what it was, but I think it was good, though. It looks good. I don't know what that's that what is. Saying, I wish I took more photos of it. I didn't see. Though. Now you now you know. Yeah, but we then, did a lot of walking around the city. Went to the Big Ben. Because, see, if you would have had more stuff, I would have yeah, more stuff to show. Exactly. And then My you could be guys. like. Psh. I don't even have any photos of New York. <laughs> yeah i don't what the heck just like the shoots i've done out there on my instagram somewhere see you, uh maybe you should start up like a personal one so you can kind of I like need to but you're doing good bro yeah. you're fucking like at eight thousand followers I think, I think when i travel more i'm gonna start just taking pictures of everything now i need to stop being that way i don't know why i'm that way i like to live in the moment but like i need to look back on shit yeah bro you can know you gotta have yeah. to have some shit to yeah. look back on like i just love being there i don't care about like you know why the reason i do it is because i like having because my memory is shit yeah it is horrible like, i kind of tell you the story but then when it comes time to like fucking tell you details i'd rather have a picture true and be like oh yeah that one place where the fuck was it oh wait hold on i got a picture of it it was whack you know true, fucking yeah, there it true. is but that that's fucking dope though like it your photography took you to london and took yeah. you to new york like did you go anywhere else Let's see, Chicago, New York, Chicago, New York, Hawaii, Hawaii, Paris. Paris. Did you do a photo shoot in Paris? I tried, but the girl that I really wanted to shoot with, she was out of the town. That I only had eight hours out there because it was you only, couldn't yeah, pull like a random Paris chick who was I, like I, I down. I didn't think about it. No, it was so rushed. Yeah, it was rushed, but it was still cool. I I, I saw the Eiffel Tower. That's all that really mattered. Yeah, that's and, the spot yeah, to go to, right? Just really. Quick. Oh, question: yeah. How the fuck was the food in Paris? We didn't even eat in Paris. What? I heard that's yeah. like the shit to do. No, that's why. That's why I'm saying we didn't have enough time to do nothing. That's fucking crazy, yeah. bro. You gotta. I, I, I want to go back to Paris and like actually spend more than one one like one day. Eight, yeah, because it was like eight hours. We only had eight hours, like a work shift. Did you guys not eat the fuck? No, we didn't. Actually. <laughs> yeah, we were just like walking around and like they had like some like little event they were, they were doing. That's almost like crazy. a farmers market, but um, I don't remember. We had drinks though. <laughs> yeah. so you're like nah I'm not gonna yeah. fucking eat anything I'm I, 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 we were planning on eating but I forgot what happened I, I don't remember why we did, did you guys have like to catch the plane is that what happened well we definitely had to be back for the train because it was like a long fucking wait but I don't remember why we didn't eat because so okay so here's a cool thing there's this girl that I met through photography mm. and she's an amazing person and photographer I love her so much um her name's Caitlin, but um, she's from New Zealand, uh-huh. and she travels by herself a lot, which is super dangerous, but I give her the most yeah. fucking props and respect, right? So she came to LA, and that's how we met, and uh-huh. we had, like, ice cream. I took her around LA, and we just became good friends. I ran into her when I mm. went to New York. What the fuck? And she would just happen to be in New York, right? So we ran into each other in New York, and she talked. She showed me around. She took me on the train, like basically how I showed her around in LA. That's a trip. She was out there for a while. So we took the train. We had pizza. We went to the Times Square, hanging out, just having a good time. She came back to the apartment I was staying at. We had a party, just like having fun. We're all smoking weed, just chilling, you know. When I was in London, Mm -hmm. she was in fucking London. What the fuck? We linked up in London, and she stood in the same hostel as me. No shit. It was like the coolest like story to me. Like that's just like our coolest friends you didn't have no pictures of that and i have no pictures god of that. damn yeah. bro it's just like that's a cool story to me like yeah like, see yeah, i would have forgot half of that she's like the realest fucking person i ever met like she's fucking amazing yeah like yeah. when people underestimate when i when i say that my memory is shit yeah i mean my memory is fucking shit yeah so that's why i take a gang of pictures yeah but I'm actually that, planning to go to greece um Oh yeah, is that for for a photo shoot or yeah, for my thirtieth? Oh no I'm shit! Tr- I'm trying to turn thirty in a different country. It's always been on my list. But why Greece? Because I'm half Greek. Oh, okay, is there like I've never been? So is there like a specific city you're trying to hit? Uh, my friend's saying 
Athens. Athens. So we're trying to go to Athens. What's cracking um, in Athens? Apparently, it's really beautiful and lots yeah. to do. So, yeah. I heard it's cheap now. Like I heard sure that uh, um, their economy's not doing so good, and they're like bankrupt, and like there's. Well, I saw in a documentary that they have a really high like drug rate out there. Like people yeah? are overdosing and dying off drugs. Off of what? Fentanyl and shit. Heroin and shit. Oh yeah, shit! I'm sure, but I mean that's everywhere. Yeah. But, just look at Victorville. Yeah. <laughs> just look yeah, at Victorville. Look at downtown LA. Oh, dude, Skid Row. Yeah, man, it's bad. I, mean, I remember the first time I went down there, fucking, uh, I was doing graffiti out there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, you remember, I, I I, used to fucking be real big on graffiti. Right, I think uh, we all did. Remember Chicken? Oh, yeah. But, We'd always throw that up. Um, I went out there just to fucking, just to throw up and shit. That's how I, yeah. that's how I got good. That's how I cut my teeth. I would go out to LA and just fucking go to the wash and fucking... Do my own thing, and I ended up on Skid Row. I was like, man, yeah, this is bad. this is a it's bad like neighborhood. Zombie, zombie land. Yeah, it's a and it's weird because they're like up twenty four seven. It's yeah, not like oh look, it's fucking two shit. in the morning, people yeah. asleep. No, nah, man, this fucking two in the morning is people like up and out, fucking doing shit, and then you can't even walk by a motherfucker's tent without them be like, wait, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Who are you? What are you? Why are you on my street? And I'm just like, yeah. uh, I'm just gonna. I used to go around Skid Row so much back then, and like I would walk around, and I've never gotten bothered, even late at night. Like, I remember, nah, that that dude was lit. Like yeah. he was like I. It felt like I fucking stepped on a leaf, and this motherfucker <laughs> popped out. Like, what are you doing? What are you? Huh? Who are you? You trying to steal my shit? I was like, nah, man. I'm just trying to throw some paint on this wall, son. And I'm right. about to leave. He's like, all right, and he just kind of like <laughs> like went back into the darkness, and I was like, what the fuck was that? And it's sketchy though because you you see shit out there there's like fucking syringes there's like yeah, shit on the ground there's fucking trash and the city hasn't done anything about it and it's i think oh, it's yeah. only gotten worse well in santa monica um they took over venice beach but now they what do you mean took like, over homeless people took over venice beach you know i used to go and there's like all the shows and the fucking thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Now like, it's like tents all the way down the strip wait so there's no vendors out there no more i'm sure there is but there's just tents covering everything now what the fuck for real i just saw on the news that they're starting to take them down dude i haven't been to venice that's my favorite beach i used to go there all the time i went out there for the free wall i used to go there just for photo shoots if it wasn't yeah it's a dope spot in la it'd be venice because i would go to the rich houses the canals yeah yeah, yeah. the the private beach and shit houses as a background for shots i don't know why just it was always cool to me yeah, I used right. to just go to Venice just for the free wall and like uh take like I don't know, like 50, 60 cans and shit, yeah. and then like destroy one wall that's only gonna be up there for like an yeah. hour, two hours, and then fuck it's like practice, you know? But that's cool about places like that. They should allow that in a lot more spots. It's see the problem is it's sort of like they only want people who are good. <laughs> yeah. They only can't be a toy. Yeah. You yeah. can't you can't be a toy and be writing shit. And then the on top of that, there's like the whole gang uh aspect of it because it, a lot of people don't know there's a big difference between a graffiti artist and a gang member. Exactly. A gang member graffiti might artist. be a graffiti artist, but they're not one and the same. Right. And but the problem is that gangs and people who commit crime also do graffiti. Right. right. And people be like, oh fucking MS thirteen and you're yeah. you're probably affiliated with some type of like, okay, yeah, we're breaking the law by painting shit, but we're artists. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, they want to throw up a name because they want the accolades of being able to show their work. And not a lot of people understand that. And it's one, because it's a crime. Mm -hmm. Two, because it's on other people's property, because it's destroying other people's property. I'm not even gonna fucking Try to give an excuse for that. Yes, we are yeah. fucking shit up. Right. And three, not everybody's fucking good. No. There, there's like people who who will spend like whole years trying to figure out what they want to write. Or and, even what their name is. And, and like they'll change their name a hundred fucking times yeah. and they never get to write it well. And then like they've already blown up like the corner liquor store's wall 30 <laughs> times with their different names. And my, it's all my them. Favorite, my favorite piece I just saw recently, actually last Friday, was uh-huh. um, a really big mural uh-huh. on the top of a freeway. But it said, more traffic ahead. <laughs> but it was like a fucking great style like a great fucking piece like, that's like, wow. fucking dope yeah. instead of a name it was just like hey, more traffic <laughs> and I, like, oh. I, I don't know if uh oh, fuck that one of my favorite graffiti artists is like most people don't even probably remember him anymore it was mark right. echo dude that was like i was just gonna bring up the game remember train i think it's called train or get up 
I think it's yeah, the Jedi. movie. No, no, no. There's a video game I used to have. It was by, oh, it was yeah, from, yeah, 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 yeah. From Echo. on the PlayStation Two, I think. Yeah, it was from Echo's brand, whatever. Yeah, the three D game. That was one of my favorite fucking games. So, for the people who don't know who this guy is, right? Yeah. He was a a famous graffiti artist. I want to say it was in New York. I think so. He also had a clothing brand too. Yeah. So he he cut his teeth being a graffiti artist, and he would airbrush T shirts. And then he would like put a, a rhino on it, and then like yeah, rhino, that, yeah. that was like his signature. Uh, his signature piece, and that's what how he started selling stuff at like flea markets, and then he would do custom t shirts, and of course he was still a graffiti artist, and still went, he still went out and did bombs. And he got there's a thing about being in graffiti that once you get street popular, right? Once people start recognizing your name, it, it gives you more leverage in your uh, credibility, right? So he started uh, doing bigger and bigger and bigger things. And he ended up being most known for, and I think he did this while he was established as a, a company, right? Mm. He did this as, while he had his company on the line, like he already had Echo right. as a brand. So he uh, uh, started up the clothing company after he stopped doing graffiti and started selling t-shirts and fashion or whatever. Like, this is back in the day when, like, Sean John and FUBU and fucking all these old clothing, street clothing brands were, like, hot shit. And this dude, because he loved his art so much, he went out and he blasted the president's private jet. Damn, like, I don't, I don't remember seeing that. You didn't, oh, no, man, bro. I like, it is. seen that one. It, That's legendary. Like, it's one of the most, like, I, I would just go, um, let's see. Echo plane. Oh no, Mark. Yeah, here it is. All right, that's, so that's legendary. So this dude went on Air Force One, if it if it ever decides to load. <laughs> uh, I don't know technical difficulties. Let's see. Uh, here we go. All right, so he he went and he bombed the. I think this was George Bush, to be honest. Wow. He went and cut the fence to where Air Force One was located, and he bombed the fuck out of it. And when I say bomb, I don't mean he put a bomb on it, but he graffitied the fuck out of the side yeah, of the plane. Yeah, bomb is like a big piece. So it's um for graffiti artists is the bigger more crazy the placement of your tag the more respect you get exactly right this dude went and graffitied the commander-in-chief's private plane <laughs> on a military establishment this the size of this dude's balls right. are fucking legendary when i heard about this I was like, nah, I can't be true. He would have got shot on well, the spot. Didn't even notice them. Just and there, there, there literally is like two dudes, one with a fucking gigantic camcorder. Because <laughs> back, this is like in 2005. This is something you'll see in a movie. Yeah, so this is like in 2005. He's got a giant camcorder and he's got a backpack on. And of course, the, the camera guy stays back. He's zoomed in and he's cutting a hole in the fucking fence. And if they see him at any point in time, can, he's shoot, shot. Right? Yeah, he can shoot. That, like at any point in time, because one, he's trespassing on the military establishment and two, he's got a backpack on and all black. Right. And he's going to jump on this fucking plane. They're probably going to assume he's putting like an actual bomb on the plane or trying to fuck some shit up. So his life was in danger and he still did this shit. Like the the amount of respect I had for this man when when he did this shit was like, I thought he was a god. Yeah. Like as an artist, I was yeah, like, this sure. dude is the most amazing motherfucker I've ever even heard of. and. Uh, uh, I haven't like I haven't kept up with graffiti and like yeah, or the graffiti it was world. Definitely a trend back then. Yeah, but this is like I haven't heard anything like this. Like no, I, don't, I don't think so. Like I mean, people are known for doing the first trains and shit like that. Yeah, like, like all the trains in New York. I've seen uh, people do like the trains like fucking everywhere else and shit. But like this, this is like unreal. I don't even remember seeing this like on the news or anything. Oh, it was on the news. Like, uh, because he already owned Echo. Right. He was in he he was the CEO of Echo Clothing Company. That's crazy. Right. And uh the way the news portrayed is someone uh graffiti the commander in chief's private plane. <laughs> and then this video this video hit the internet first. There it goes. And well there it is. Man, I would be shitting bricks. 
I would be like, fuck, 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 fuck. I would not be able to keep a straight line, let alone fucking drop a bomb on this. And this dude has like, oh man, still free. I'm like, man, this dude's got the biggest balls on the fucking planet. That was Mark? Yeah, man, that was Mark Echo. That's crazy. I was like, this is fucking Bro, I can't imagine seeing like graffiti in Greece. Really? Just, uh, like imagine seeing like graffiti in a different country where like the language is so different. Different. <laughs> yeah. Oh right, because the calligraphy like, would be like completely. It wouldn't yeah, even be in English. Exactly. I wonder how that looks. Uh, I've never honestly, I've never seen graffiti. Well, I've seen Spanish. Like I've seen like. But to be honest, it was kind of the writing whack. and like Greek writing is definitely different. Yeah, it's like super big and like I don't know. Like I've seen Spanish graffiti. I've seen like uh, but all the all the graffiti I've seen uh, well, at least before now on Instagram, like there, there's artists everywhere now. Yeah. Uh, but before when I was younger, I really didn't see anything else besides English. I don't know if it's because the internet wasn't as big, but it's sort of like everywhere else, like the the places that had the biggest graffiti influences. Was New York, L.A. Right. Those were the two places they were. Started in New York, right? Uh, yeah, started in New York, like in the seventies, I believe, where they did like actual pieces and shit like that, and it, like, they would bomb whole trains and shit. But it, damn, I missed that game. That was such a good game. It was. It was a good game. I forgot what was the point of it though. Like, what you had to make drop bombs places and shit. The further you get, I think the cooler your piece gets and bigger and crazier and then fight people and like get in yeah. fights and fucking... the, some of those games back in the day were yeah. odd like fucking what was it that hip hop game where you're like a oh, hip hop yeah, artist and like you fucking people and you're fighting up fighting ice yeah. cream and shit. The, I forgot that game the name but that game was fun as fuck yeah dude PlayStation 2 games were the shit bro they really were uh but back to back to our little subject so you've been like you wanted to go to Greece or do you have like right. plans to do a photo shoot out there, or is it just there's, there's relax? There's one agency out there that I found, surprisingly. Uh-huh. Um, man, I don't know. Some of the models don't look as cool as I was hoping. Uh-huh. But I don't know. I think for my 30th, I just want to have a vacation. I just don't think I want to focus on, on anything. I'm just going to have fun. What are you trying to do uh, out there? Just fucking relax? Just relax just and chill see the seat. city, you know. Um, probably hit up some restaurants some of my friends were telling me about. Because one of my buddies, the one that you saw in the London video, Rob, he travels a lot, so he, like, has, like, a lot of the shit that we can do. Like, he's fucking, he knows everything. So, like, we can just go eat to, like, the dope-ass spots and, like, yeah, get some good food and go to some cool bars or maybe some clubs. Who knows, you know? But I definitely want to be 30 I, in a different country. Like, i never so. been to Greece, you know? Yeah. And, like, I turned fucking 30 during COVID, so right. that shit fucking sucked. Yeah, it does. So I was like, ah, boo. Yeah, man. That's why I was like, I really, really want to be out of the country when I when, for my birthday. I don't want to do no boring shit. And so you're you're working for who right now? The um, uh, I shoot for Forever Twenty One right now. So that that's got to be like a nice cap in your feather, right? Because it's like a professional uh, fashion company that yeah. you're shooting for. I mean, it's nice to have steady work and not struggle. Mm-hmm. So now when people ask me for my rate, I don't fucking lower myself because I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you don't need to no more. I don't need to now because if they say no to my high rate, I'm still getting paid for my weekly job. Yeah. So if I say a high rate and they say yes, bonus. And I'm being, that's what I said. I'm so surprised by how many people are saying yes right now. That's great, man. That yeah. shows that, that like your 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 product is worth what you're charging. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you were trash, they'd be like, nah, fuck you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, cause there you can tell, right, when there's like room for negotiation. Mm-hmm. Like if you can kind of go, okay, nah, uh, mm, mm, oh, nah, well, this doesn't let's just scroll up real quick. This is my friend's mom that I shot right there. Shout out to Colleen. She's literally a fucking beautiful woman. Look at her. Oh Look yeah, at her. She's like, the she's first cute. the first woman I ever shot around her age bracket, and she fucking killed it. How old is she? Like fifty? Um, I don't remember how old she is, but she fucking killed it. Look at that stare. Yeah, she looks fierce, bro. Yeah, that was a fun shoot. And how'd that come about? She was just like, well, my mom wants to. I'm good pictures. friends with her daughter, and she was like, "Hey, my mom wants some photos." I'm like, "Okay, let's do it." And she was just like, "Bam!" Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to shoot more uh, people like this. A little bit older, a little yeah, more, a little uh, more mature. That's some what, some wanna, silver foxes. Yeah, I want to do something like that. It was fun. And do you have like an age limit, like for like how young or how old? As long as they look interesting to me, I'm down for it. 
you know? So, like, if a 16-year-old came at you with, like, a 1500, it's like, look, I like your shit, shoot me. Yeah, but uh, it has to be, obviously, something dope. It can't be weird. <laughs> it can't be. I don't know, yeah. bro. Once you get a certain age, once you get yeah. to a certain I youngness. Mean, there's, there's models who start when they're really young. The, the girl I shot for work was only seven years old. Oh, no shit. And she fucking, that was the first work I've ever got in store. My first print in store I got was a seven-year-old uh, little girl. Really? Yeah, it's in Forever Twenty One stores. I don't know if it's still up now, but and how does that work with a with like a big company like that? Like I know that they have like the roster of photographers, but it's more it's it's not as creative, right? It's like it's, not, it's, very it's like here's based. here's our idea, yeah. get it done, mm -hmm. shoot it like this. Yeah, and like it's very uh sterile, right? Yeah, yeah. So we set up the they give us the mood board and then we set up the lighting and we set up the backdrop for whatever it is. And most it, of the time, it's just like a blank color, like a normal color, like a blue color. Yeah, because all that's just for uh, advertising, yeah, right? Yeah, for advertisement. So you're yeah. you're kind of like very limited in your options. Yeah. So what what do you actually get to tweak? That the like they go okay. Here's the ha the musts. What do you get to like kind of like fuck with? They just want my creative angles and make mm -hmm. sure everything's sharp and in focus and the lighting's perfect. That's basically where I come in. But if you scroll back up, um, sometimes we do outdoor shit. And there's one that I posted on my Instagram just because I love, love, love the model that I worked with. She's probably like the most stunning girl I've ever met in my life and so sweet. Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty far in. Oh, you in went down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right there, that girl right there. Uh, the Asian girl? Uh, no, right there, to, uh, above her, right there, boom, on the grass. Oh, this okay. is for Forever Twenty One that Let's I did, uh, and we went on location. And this model fucking is amazing, and yeah, so just shit like this, like they give me a premise or like an idea, uh -huh. and then I just kind of do what I do. How long do you have to get the shots they need done? We were outside for like four hours. Oh no shit! Because we do like five looks. Oh, you guys, yeah, oh, we, we do multiple looks, and then they also have video. So mm -hmm. like I'm doing photo, and then when I take a break, video comes in. And uh -huh. she does her video. And, um, yeah, if you scroll to the next one. Yeah, so these were on location for this um, summer collection that was coming out. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. And do they have, like, a, do they have locations set out for you guys also? Yeah, they usually have everything ready. And, oh, and really? they bring us. Yeah, but this it, one was behind our building, so. We, so we, you guys get, like, a, a whole breakdown of location, yeah, life, like, like area, have, clothing? Like, yeah, it's a whole process. Oh, they'll, no shit. They'll have email, or we'll have, like, meetings and stuff, and they tell us what we're going to do. How often are you guys shooting? Like, we every shoot day? every day. Every not, day. Not stuff like this. We shoot, like, e -com every day. Like, the stuff you see on the website, so uh -huh. you can buy, you know, where you shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the website, uh, we shoot that every day. God damn. Yeah. We shoot like a hundred things a day. It's crazy. And have you have you thought about like working with other uh clothing companies like this? Yeah, I mean this is good to have on uh -huh. your portfolio for sure. Like for sure. Forever twenty one's a perfect uh place to start. Yeah, it's definitely it's a, a uh, like a cap in your feather, you know, it'd be like, Yeah, dude, like yeah. I worked for Forever Twenty One. Like you know the uh, you already know the process of having right. to work with a with a I'm learning high a lot. company. I'm learning a lot, I still have a lot to learn. Like, what do you think you're going to try to improve on after this? I want to do more campaigns. Oh, yeah? Like, big campaigns. That's a lot of more work, though. It's Have you thought about stressful. working for, like, uh, other, like, not not fashion companies, but, like, uh, commercial companies? Like, I don't know, fucking, like, Pepsi, Coca-Cola. Oh, that's, that's what I would love to do. Yeah. I would love to, like, branch out somehow, but I still have to learn so much. Because then that would be, like, another uh, yeah, but if I get area to that, If I get to that level, I definitely couldn't have, like, a normal... A Monday, normal gig. Monday through Friday you would have mm -hmm. to be freelancing for campaigns after campaign after campaign. But that, that's that's a goal of mine. Like so, how how much money are you trying to make? Like have at you least ten k projects. Ten k projects. Uh, All right. um, ten start off at least ten k projects and then get to like twenty k projects. You know right. I mean? Where I'm getting twenty k for the entire fucking day and shoot because it could be like three days. You know uh huh. What I mean? So stuff like that. I'm trying to do campaigns like that. That's so, like a goal. Once you start getting like, because that that's all gonna come from like big companies, like big fucking companies, yeah. But like, would you feel conflicted about like fucking because this is very uh, like I said, it's a very sterile environment. What they want, how they want it, you know, like would that would that bother you being like because well, you that's don't. The thing when it comes to work, 
You uh-huh. just do what you got to do. Right. But it's like everything else. This you is know? just to support you. Like these jobs support your craft, support the gear you want to buy. So would you like do like one 10K project a month and then every other day just fucking do whatever you want? Exactly. But the more the merrier, like, obviously, right? Yeah, of course. Because you don't want to end up struggling for the next month. Yeah, but 10k in one day, yeah, like 10k in one day is nice. Yeah, you that just well, okay, nice, cool. Yeah. I can live off of fucking 10k for a month. The right, fuck, right, right, right. What kind? I don't know, bro. If you can't live off of 10k for a month, you're yeah, doing something you're wrong. Doing something wrong. But that for sure would be the goal, like at least a uh, big shoot every month. Have you thought about going to any Asian countries and doing like uh, shoots out there? I want to go to Tokyo so bad. Yeah, yeah so that'd be amazing. But not for photography. No, for sure. If I can. If I can figure, like, you know, I don't have, like, you know, I'm not known like that where I can just be like, yo, I'm going to Japan. Like, I mean, I'm sure I can post something and you never know. But, yeah, um, that's true. Um, yeah. Like, London, I have people in London now and now in New York. I have people in New York I can reach out to, but I can't go anywhere and be like, yo, let's do this shit. Yeah, because right. then the language barrier is kind of hard, right? That also. Because you went to, like, countries that they speak English. Speak yeah. English. You go to, like, japan or china or fucking they're, yeah, they're gonna, gonna be like uh, uh uh well my my friend my good friend lamont he's in poland right now for work mm-hmm. but he's getting back into his photography and he has a language barrier too but he's making it happen yeah yeah so it's just like there's a girl just like google translate the yeah, shit like using Fuck. all these apps and shit and then there's a girl who like he works with now that helps him talk to the models and stuff all right so explain to me this picture right here oh like what's going on what's going on right here boy yeah, that's actually at work. We were setting up for the, uh, I think we were setting up for that shoot that I was talking about. Because who's this model? Who's, who, who is this gentleman? He's that very is, handsome. That is our plus size uh, male model. His name's Simon Lester. <laughs> 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 I'm actually really surprised how much love this photo got. Like, I don't post photos of myself. And uh-huh. I think that's probably why. But, like, I got so many. They're probably comments. like, oh, my God, who is this, this amazing is, looking yeah, guy? Like, <laughs> um, so my, my coworker, Mo, took this. We were setting up. A studio for one of our shoots and uh-huh. we have to test lighting uh-huh. and jokingly i jumped in and she actually took really good photos of me. <laughs> you're like ah fuck yeah. like, so like, oh, let me post fuck, these let's just keep them then well yeah well, so is this like your tinder profile yep <laughs> it's all, all my dating apps. i actually have another photo that my other coworker took of me that i like a lot it's, it's, a, it's on all my dating all your dating apps. <laughs> i'm single ladies sadly um uh, I mean, not sadly, I've been, you know, I'm working on myself. You know? Hey, man, that's all good, too. So, ladies, slide it to the DM. Slide them in. But if you're trying to work, get your money out. Yeah, for real. Get that money out if you listen this far, at least. Yeah. So, let's see. So, you've been to London. You're looking at traveling. But, hey, man, if you start traveling to places that don't speak English, yeah, fuck it. Just yeah, Google I mean, Translate the well, shit I mean, out of it. I don't know. If, I mean, I, I have a feel. I don't know. I feel like nowadays, almost anywhere you go... A lot of people speak English now. It's, Think so? And we're only in America. I feel like they don't teach different languages in schools. Like, yeah, like in fucking European countries, they're like second language is usually English. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, they're 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 not fucking. You know, they're way ahead of us. Well, I speak two languages now: English and Spanish. Not What's sure. up? I, mean, but, I wish I even spoke Spanish. But um, that that's just because of my heritage, you know. Right. But like, I have a friend who speaks English, Spanish. Japanese and German wow. and I'm just like bitch how the wow, fuck wow, are you wow. not like super employed right now yeah I'm like make so much money being yeah bilingual. like you this not she's quadlingual yeah, quad like what the fuck like she speaks fluent German she speaks yeah. fluent English Spanish and fucking uh Japanese like what the fuck yeah like I have a friend oh, we're friends on Instagram we haven't met in real life but mm. she's from Germany and she mm. speaks English and I'm like yeah see everyone like knows English like, I feel like if I go to Greece, there's going to be a lot of English speakers. People say that English is... Some people say it's English that's easy. The easiest to learn. Some people say it's easy. But yeah. some I people say it's super hard. hard. I think it's harder for, like, the Asian cultures. Because I, I think, like, in Japan, they don't have R's. They don't pronounce R's. No, I don't I, I don't think they have R's. I remember, yeah. I remember seeing a video where, where they were trying to say, like, refrigerator. Uh-huh. And it was, like, the cutest little video. <laughs> They're like, like, like well, well, feature. Well, right? well, something like that. It was funny, but... um. Yeah, I was yeah man. The, about that. Like, uh, I, I've been trying to learn Japanese for like fucking ever, and it's hard, bro. Because there's, oh, yeah. all right, one, you have to learn any language. You need to be able to speak it, read it, and write it, right? Mm-hmm. And you can't just speak it because there's gonna be moments where you need to read some yeah, shit. Yeah, got a menu or something, right? Yeah. And you're gonna be like, "What the fuck are these sticks?" So, so you have to start like every like a fucking kindergartner, right? You got to learn to fuck because speaking, you'll probably learn it first you'll learn how to speak that shit just from hearing it 
So they teach you to read and write it first, and then they teach you to speak it. And apparently, uh, Japanese is a derivative of Chinese, right? And they, like, borrow shit from Chinese. So there's, to write it, there's two different styles of writing. There's katakana and hiragana. And there's, like, it's like having two English alphabets, bro. So instead of us having, like, 26 characters, they have, like, I, I want to say close to, like, a, a Chinese has, like, a thousand characters or some shit like that. And then, like, Japanese has, like, 50 or 60. And it's just oh, shit that you got to remember. And they could be used differently, right, in writing. So, like, you might see an advertisement in, like, hiragana, and then you'll see another advertisement in katakana. And then there's, like, a different writing style for, like, their books that you got to learn and there's like a different like for their comic books is a different style and everything has a different use case and you have like to them it's like oh yeah like that that means that and that means that and you're just like what the fuck but that's a completely different thing than that and they're like yeah but don't worry about it like what the fuck and i'm sure it's it's super hard to uh write yeah uh so their writing structure is like up and down mm. and it's from left to right versus like no it's right to left versus us it's left to right if you see my penmanship in english it's, it's, bro i have the worst writing bro, if, in you, general. if you ever seen uh, a <laughs> japanese person write like handwrite it's like amazing because they're tiny little characters yeah. and they'll write stupid fast and it's like accurate as fuck yeah. And I can't even fucking I can't do cursive, bro. Like my I cursive have, looks I like have trash. The worst, the worst fucking writing in, in history. I write like a little high school kid still. Oh yeah, me too, bro. That's why I type. It's, Typing it's is bad. like a godsend. Yeah. Like I, if someone sees my handwriting, they're like, "Who? What kind of fucking three year old <laughs> fucking wrote this stupid shit down?" Like they're missing the R. They're missing the E, bro. Autocorrect saves my life so many times. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Like, I don't know about all that. But yeah, if you if you get a chance to go to Japan and fucking, uh, you know, take pictures out there. I heard it's. There's the thing about Japan that I like is, is there's a uh, two different cultures, right? Like there's a city culture and there's the country culture. And they're like back to back. Like you can go anywhere in the city and you get to see all the nice. Uh, to me their cities are better than every city that I've ever seen. Right. Like LA compared to Tokyo, there's no comparison. Have you been to Tokyo? No, but I've seen yeah. plenty of fucking pictures and well, I've researched like, the I fuck out like of it. I how clean they are. It's fucking like, weird. It's just beautiful out there. Okay, well, someone pointed out this fact to me that like blew my mind, right? You would assume a clean city, right, would have trash cans everywhere, right? Yeah. They have zero trash cans. That's interesting. You know why? So the they their way of thinking about it is if there's a trash can somewhere, people are going to throw away their trash and somehow it's going to end up on the ground. So they don't want trash cans anywhere. So what people do is that they hold on to their trash until they get home. They get home. Wow. And that's helped them keep it clean. And then I feel on, like in, you try to do that in California and we're just going to throw on the ground. <laughs> exactly, right? Oh, there's not a trash can here. They nah, do that anyways. And they yeah, throw it throw it on the sidewalk. True. They'll that's throw true. it in like someone's car. Fucking, how, they'll just... How do like we as as Americans even get this distant from like this, these rules, man? Like how do they stay so clean and then we're just like, ah, I don't give a fuck. Like why? I don't you know. You fuck someone. I don't know, bro. Like, like it's, it's strange to me. And it's not in a good way either. It's like it's not cool to not give a fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially if it's like a place where you live, your city. Yeah. Yeah, fucking, like, come on now. Like, but it's weird, right? Like, they, they had that foresight to be like, okay, if we put trash cans out, there's going to be some asshole who doesn't give a fuck and not going to throw away his trash. Like, a huge deal. Like, if you fucking litter, it's like a $10,000 fine. It, it is, yeah. bro. Like, it, it is a big deal. Like, and the crazy part is that, like, it, I've seen video. So, from my understanding is that the Japanese people were super polite, right? Mm -hmm. Their culture is very polite. It's always very respectful, right? Like, everybody has, like, this like united sense of community right and like understanding of each other so on the trains right like if you see a new york train people are packed in like fucking no tomorrow and they don't give a fuck right. and then like they'll they'll like spread out their elbows fucking super wide just to fucking get a little bit of room in japan there's a specific guy who won every like during rush hour they'll like push people into a train and everybody will try to be as small as humanly possible yeah i think i've seen videos on that and fuck that because, yeah, like, I'm yeah bro and, I'm just like, and they'll no squeeze way. they'll like no hold way. the train yeah. for one person 
so they can get in because that person needs to get to work. No, fuck that. In New York, they'd be like, bro, if you don't get your ass in, we're cutting you're, that you're leg off yeah, and you're, you're, late. you're late. You're late. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, you son of a bitch. You're holding everybody yeah, uh, you. else in the train. But in Japan, they're like, no, no, we're going to hold this entire fucking train until this gentleman squeezes Did you his... you see that uh, video recently in New York that it was like a uh, huge flood? Yeah, dude, I don't know what the and, fuck's going on out there. I guess it's like a tornado or not. Uh, I don't know, some like um, like hurricane was coming and it would like hit hit them somehow. And it fucked them up? But all, it was like the whole train was like flooded, but people were still going to work. Yeah, dude, that's <laughs> a were, fucking trip. They were still walking in the water to get to the train. So, so like, I'm late. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a video of a dude trying to put on a trash bag for pants. And um, like walk through, oh, yeah, I think I've seen that one. walk yeah. through that fucking lake. Imagine though, like, oh, there's a huge hurricane, but if you're late to work, uh, uh, we're fuck gonna, you, we're gonna penalize you. We're, we're, we're gonna like, get you, you know, written like, up. You still gotta be here, like, bro. You know how terrifying that would be, like, because that shit was like to waste level. Yeah. So it was, it was heavy. So how the fuck is the train gonna work? I have no. Like, are they like waterproof? I guess maybe it was because maybe minor... it wasn't uh, drained up. Maybe it wasn't uh, covered down there. Out. Because all right, like it, the video that I saw, like that you walk down there, right, and yeah. then the water went up to this dude's like lower pocket. Right. And then you would assume the train is about the same height as this motherfucker, right? So does that mean that the train is like pushing through fucking water? I don't even. I need to watch the rest of the video to see if it even showed the train because I don't know if it was flooded on that part. Cause I that's, think it was just flooded on the entrance. That's gotta be know. scary as fuck, bro. I know. Like maybe it's just All me that being a yeah, shit, bro. Like, like what if like you don't know like water is just water. You take that motherfucking step, you start getting zapped. Like what the <laughs> fuck you do? <laughs> like you, just, oh, <laughs> then you die, and then everybody else is like, oh yeah, that dumb motherfucker died. Fuck this fool. Like that's what? True. You know, like they're fucking savages. They don't give a fuck. That's crazy. Like if that shit happened here in Cali, I guarantee everybody like, no, no, there's only a foot of water. I'm not going to work. Sorry, yeah. boss. Ain't going to fucking work. Right? I heard New Yorkers don't do not give a fuck. Apparently. But yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on in New York, but that that's a completely different culture from yeah. America and Japan. Like like you said, bro, we don't give a fuck out here. Yeah. Out there it's like everybody has to give a fuck. Yeah. Because it's like uh, like dishonor on you, dishonor on your family, yeah. dishonor on I'm everybody the fuck here. else. I'm trying to go to Tokyo. I I probably would love it there. Bro, and then the cool thing about Japan is that there's, like, there's some for everybody there. Like, mm-hmm. if you're a fucking weirdo like me who loves anime, there is uh, Akahibara, the, and then there's, like, there's, like, a whole section for, like, nerds. But if you're into, like, cars and shit, there's, like, right. a whole area that fucks with cars. And if, like, you're, if you're, like, the artsy type, there's, like, a whole section. Just like every other city, there's, like, a whole section for that group of people. But, the the like I said, the fun part about... Japan is it the duality of that country is really dope because they have a hyper city, right? Mm. It's super advanced. It's super clean. It's like the the city you want to go to. But on the flip side, they have the countryside that's beautiful. It looks like no one's ever touched it, right? Like it looks like fucking, you'll find like 100-year-old Buddhist statues and temples and shit that like there's there's nothing for like miles around like you're like what the fuck like how is how is there a fucking super city like 100 miles away and then like over here it looks like no one's even put a road like that's that's like the dopest part to me about Japan like that you can go from like super city where everything's like fucking technologically advanced to like fucking Just 100% nature and shit and yeah dude it's outside. fucking dope like I'm not a what is it a landscape person, right. but I mean sometimes you just need the vibes and the views and like just comfort. Have you thought you about doing like life. labs lab uh, landscapes? I, I'm not into it. I don't see things that like I see it in my eye and it's mm-hmm. fucking stunning. And then when you take a photo of it, it doesn't look it doesn't the same capture way it as your eye. Like I wish they created something where we can just blink and it screenshots what we see. Oh I yeah, bro. Fucking, have the best, fucking Neuralink. Have Haven't you heard photos? Haven't you heard of Neuralink? No, but I know I know for a fact people would use it in the creepiest fucking ways, though. So Elon Musk, right? He's trying to invent a chip that goes into your brain, right? And it helps you think better. It makes you be better, right? No so way. Yeah. Like, he's legitimate. Like, they've already put it in a monkey. And the yeah, monkey's... See, 
<laughs> Once people start doing that shit, he's gonna have a button that kills us all. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, fuck he's this like, guy. You know, I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> and we'll just fall. Dead. It's gonna be like some Black Mirror. Black Mirror shit. I, I, but the crazy part is that they're pushing for it, right? And no one said, no, this is too much. This is too crazy. We're gonna push in people's brains. Everybody's like, nah, that's cool. That's fine. I want 5G in my brain. That's cool. Is that gonna be like a, we're gonna live longer type thing too? Well, okay. So the whole concept of it is that this chip is supposed to give you more ability to do the things your brain already does right so if you think it makes you so think like faster Adderall. yeah like kind of so it it's gonna it's basically gonna integrate into your brain and it's gonna allow you to do all these crazy things that the brain already does but better right mm. you think if you think faster like you 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 have these thoughts right imagine why not just give us like a, a limit limitless pill like the movie that's what it's gonna be because there's no there's not no chemical that right. you can take but it's sort of like this thing is a chip that works on electricity and it's going to help. It's sort of like, OK, they're going to figure out a way to send the signals to your brain to this chip and then vice versa. So he's he's going to have. So they've already put it in a monkey. Right. And this monkey was playing a game from his brain on a screen. No, I think I did see that. video. And I don't remember the chip, but I remember the monkey playing the game. So the monkey's literally just sitting there looking at a screen, right? And he's trained that, like, if he does something on the screen, they give him, like, food. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, playing this game so he can get food. But the crazy part is that it's working, right? Most people are like, oh, he's just fucking pushing a dot, right? Like, you just see the dot go off, and you're like, oh, what the fuck? That's so lame. But then when you think about it, it's he's thinking about something. It's going to the chip. The chip is processing it. And then sending it to the computer and it's having the computer do something and then clicking that button. That's fucking bananas. Right. And this is like the early stages. It's only been in development for like maybe like five years and they already have animal testing. OK, I know it's fucked up. Monkey's got a chip in his brain. Oh, well, you know, but imagine yeah. once it's done. Imagine once the okay. first version this is, is a done. This conspiracy that I'm about to create right now. Making oh, this fuck. 100%. But they show us that they're testing on monkeys, but for sure, 100%, I know they have human test subjects. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you know who I think it is? People on death row. You think so? That would be the best way, wouldn't it? But like do you, you really want to give superpowers to a death row person? No, because they're, they're going to be contained, obviously. So if anything happens, you just... <laughs> but like, if someone's going to die in prison, why not right. fucking test your human shit on people who don't deserve, you know, like... That who are going to die. Yeah, who are going to die. Like... I'm, just like that mm. one movie um, where the kid controls the prisoner. It's like a video game and futuristic shit. I don't know, bro. That sounds sketchy. I don't know. I don't know. You think so? You seen that movie I'm talking about, though? No. It's old. It's an uh -uh. old movie. It's a, Gerard, I think it's Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler. It's a kid that's like in the future, and he like uh -huh. controls a video game, but it's a real prisoner, and they fight to the death because they're, that all, they're cool. all death row inmates. That's not, maybe he, that's where he got his idea from. How happened. old is that? It's pretty old. It's probably, pretty it's old. Maybe 10 he. Years old. Oh, that yeah. And they're all like, well, yeah. maybe he had the idea ten years ago. But you never seen that movie? Nah. Damn, I can't Gerard Butler as a right. human puppet. Yeah, he's like a prisoner, and a kid controls him. That sounds kind of yeah, cool. And he they have to fight. To See, the death. but that's all right. Think about it this way, right? Like, so the first version, once like, let's say the they they iron everything out, right? Mm. It's gonna be this chip that goes into your brain, right? It helps you think faster, like process shit and be able to take pictures and shit like because it's going to be connected to your brain. Anything you see, you'll be able to record. So I just blink and then it goes to my computer or my phone. Yeah, bro. Imagine it's just like air, like an airdrop. Like you're like, oh, this is dope. And you do something and yeah. then like airdrops, whatever the fuck you saw. And do you think it will be perfectly what you see or do you think it will have exposures and fucking like, I, like, like I think like it's going to be whatever your eyes limited to, right? Like if yeah. you have fucked up eyes, you're going to have a fucked up picture. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Unless that shit clears your fucking vision, that'd uh, be insane. Maybe because like the eyes are like a lens, right? Yeah. Like however the your eye is shaped is how your vision looks like. So if you have like a stigmatism, because like a stick, how stigmatism works is your eyes are different shapes, yeah, and that affects how your your vision works. So they like physically have to like mold your eye to make your eyesight better. But imagine that shit, right? So, like, you're out with your friends partying. You're like, I don't know if it has to be, like, a swipe or a blink or some mm -hmm. shit. And then you can take a picture. And then it'll save it on the chip and then maybe throw it to your phone. That'd be interesting. Right? But that, like, once you get there, the amount of shit you'd be able to do, you probably wouldn't even uh, need a phone. This is crazy. If this is, like, to go, like, worldwide. Because I think there's going to be limits now. 
What do like, you mean? Say you go to a fucking strip club, but now the signs is okay, but no screen recording with your eyes. Uh, you know what I mean? It's gonna have be like okay, now. like okay, See, but everyone then, has a chip, no fucking blinking. But then they get then it starts getting yeah. into the sketchy shit, right? Yeah. So so let's say it's like a cell phone in your brain, right? right. That helps you do shit a little bit better, right? Because if someone told me when I was ten, be like, hey, bro. Your phone's gonna be this fucking thin, and it's gonna be this big, and gonna be able to go on the internet and be able to take pictures and all this shit. I'd be like, what the fuck? Right, we'll that sounds that. dope. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah. But now we're talking about this chip that goes into your brain. Probably in like ten years from now, everybody's gonna have it. It's gonna be like no big deal. Never know, right? So everybody's gonna be thinking super fast. Everybody's gonna be able to take pictures with their eyeballs and shit. And like he he said that he wants to have people be able to communicate with each other without them talking. That's kind of weird. That's a trip, right? So, but it would make sense, right? Like, if you can fucking take a picture with your eyeball, there's and nothing stopping you. Basically, be like telepathic. Yeah, so you'd be able to like text message each other. Yeah. Right, and you'd be able to get these notifications. But can you imagine that shit being on your brain, like fucking? But see, like everything that. Imagine, okay, I'm I'm gonna throw this real life scenario. Let's jump forward twenty years, right? How old we are now? Imagine Joey fucking hitting you up in your fucking brain right now. Yeah, right. That's I'm like. Bing! You're just calling me. What's up, bro? What are you doing? Oh, chilling. Chilling. You're yeah. just like a fucking being schizo. Okay, just like everything we've ever had, things fuck up. Yeah, so, so that's where she gets sketchy. Shit fucks. Like we're dead, or I, pff, fuck. Does it just does it just break and like we had to replace it? I don't or, know, bro. So that's you know, a good ass question. There's gonna be a lot of things. Here's another one, right? Like, let's say everybody gets a chip in their brain, right? Yeah. And then, I don't know. You fucking you fuck up. Right, you become a a, a felon. Right? right, they're gonna know where you're at. That motherfucker's gotta have GPS That's on it. True. It's also true. Like, there's you're no way you can hide anymore. Have no privacy in general because I yeah. feel like they're gonna be watching everything. And there's another one. What if your chip gets hacked? Mm-hmm. Now someone can see what you see. Right, you're jerking off and shit, watching some porn up. Fucking some dude just. I mean, fucking. It, won't, it won't be a good time for them. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, let's see what uh, Gabriel's doing see right now. Shot he's got. <laughs> yeah, but then now they have some dirt on you, right? That's They're like, true. oh, they shit. Blackmail you. Yeah, that's, then that's out of good. nowhere. I'm sure Elon Musk is the fucking brilliant, most brilliant man in the world. I'm sure he's thinking of every fucking aspect. Like, And then, okay, so let's let's go even further. Let's take that whole GPS thing. Like, you, they can find you, right? Yeah. If you can communicate between each other, right, without talking... What about them monitoring your thoughts? Right? Like, you're you're not trying to transmit to nobody, yeah, right? sometimes we don't even know what we're going to think. Like, if you were to sit here right now and say what my next thought is going to be, you'll you be don't, thoughtless. Yeah, you don't yeah. know. But, right, let's say you're like, man, fuck my job, whatever. In your head. In your head <laughs> and shit. And it sends, like, a little alert to your That's job. Like, true. Bing, like true. hey, this dude's mad at this company. Put him on a watch list. That's true. Here's what his thought was. Now, there's got to be some type of privacy thing. Yeah, but there's gonna be an incognito mode. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh man, you know, can you imagine not not knowing how to work that thing and fuck me up know. and live streaming your thoughts? Left blink for incognito mode. Left blink for <laughs> mode. <laughs> That'd be such a trip. I know, right? And then surfing the internet, like let's say it gets that far, surfing the internet on your brain, like you zone what the if, fuck out. What if I can see in your eye? That'd be trippy. Like you're you're oh like you're fucking thinking, screen sharing, scrolling going on your eye. Like, I'll just see, like, the light on your eye going up, like, as you're scrolling. Like, mm, mm, mm. like you can kind of tell when someone yeah. else is doing some other yeah. shit. Like, be like, oh, no, Gabriel's, Gabriel's searching right now. He's something. Google searching. Yeah. He's like, hold on. And you can like, see the light going, you see light going past my life. <laughs> that would be a fucking it. trip, right? That'd be interesting. That's some Black Mirror shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it's sort of like, once we get there, would, would it, would it be, would anybody give a fuck, you know? Because yeah, we don't give a not. fuck that we, me and you both know, right? That the FBI at all times is monitoring everybody. Like, if, like, uh, a good example is like, if you like type in child pornography on a, like, a, a search website or whatever the fuck, you're going to end up on somebody's fucking, like, list, right? This is just for example purposes. Guys. No, this is true because, yeah. you know, this is how it happens. It's yeah, true. It happens. Yeah. Right? It, but it, it happens. To everybody, you search shit like if you search how to make a bomb, right, right, right. you end up on some list somewhere, right? So there, like, uh, what happened? What uh, operation? Ah, oh, fuck that. There was a bill that happened after nine eleven that like allowed the government to search your emails, your whatever the fuck, as long as it was for uh, terrorism prevention purposes, right? Right. If if they can do that, 
imagine what they could be able to do like once this thing is like 100 percent out there that's true even even like when there's an incognito mode like are you really even on incognito mode? Like, i don't know that <laughs> i think something came out not that long ago saying that like incognito mode like they still send your data to people i bet uh i for, i think they're getting sued for it actually but i think it's just for like a search your search engine won't pop up i it think it's still just sends data yeah it still sends data you know I mean? like uh fuck i, I want to say google's being sued for it because it was like a false advertising or some shit uh, like that that's crazy but i i can just i can just imagine what's gonna happen a, after like another 20 years like who knows? Maybe that uh, we won't even make it that far. Maybe that monkey becomes that one monkey from fucking Planet of the Apes yeah, and shit. He starts talking. He's like, "Fuck you guys! Yeah, Give me freedom!" Bro, I don't know, man. But li- life is fucking bananas. But let, let, we're probably gonna cut it right yeah. here because you have an appointment at the that twelve. Gotta go our, eat. I'm our broski. So let everybody know where they can find you. I am Legend um, on Instagram. I I A M Legend. If you want to see the website, it's imlegend.com. Same spelling. I think you might have to do the www. I'm not sure. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, here, here's it why. pulled up right now. I don't really have Twitter. Um, I mean, I do, but I have like five followers. <laughs> I wish I made one. But yeah, you just got to be more active. It. Um, you never know. I might. I love podcasts. I might start one, man. You yeah, man, me. do it. It's fun. Honestly, it everybody who's been on is like, man, this is so much fun. It's yeah. so easy. I'm like, yeah, man, you're yeah. just having a conversation with whoever. Right. I've been on a few, too, but I want to do one with, like, my models and just, like, talk about their life do in it. the industry and shit. Do It'd it. be crazy. It's just, like, uh, you got to, like, everything else, bro, you got to invest into it, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, I am Legend on Instagram. Yes, um, I, I am Legend. Anywhere else? Uh, YouTube? Uh, no, no YouTube yet. All right, so on Twitter, but, you know, follow him. Help his subscribers over, over there on Twitter. Um, but that's it, everybody. Uh, you guys have a good night or good day and good evening. Catch you guys later. Thanks for listening.